You still love your mother? I'll strike that, Your Honor. I have no further questions. So many of us who have followed the case of Letitia Stauk ever since the day her stepson, Gannon Stauk, went missing on January 27th, 2020, we've been waiting more than three years to determine if her daughter, Harley Hunt, her 17-year-old only daughter, would ever take the stand and testify against her. And now that question has been finally answered. Even though the court had to wait a little bit longer on Monday, April 17th, a full two and a half minutes after Harley Hunt's name was called for her to enter the courtroom, once she finally hit the stand and gave a compelling four and a half hours worth of testimony, which you're about to watch uninterrupted after I finish yapping, it was well worth it. Ms. Hunt, if you would step forward and raise your right hand. Oh, where is she? <laughs> I just saw someone coming through the door. <laughs> Let me give you a few quick highlights. In this epic battle of mother against daughter, Harley entered the courtroom wearing a baby blue dress, and she was very timid and soft-spoken as she swore to tell the truth, only feet away from her mother, Letitia, who wouldn't really give her the time of day. Either she would glare at her or pretend she's not looking at her at all. Letitia had all these ways of either trying to still intimidate Harley or pretend she's a nothing. So there was a direct examination of Harley, a cross-examination, a redirect, and even jury questions. And at the end is when Harley really started to break down. Now, I know the jury is still split, the court of public opinion, that is, just like it's been all these years. Although it might be swaying a little bit towards Harley's side, some people think, oh, she's just Letitia's little mini-me. How could she not know Gannon was in that van as they drove cross-country? Others believe Harley. She was abused. She was intimidated. She's going to talk about how her mother used to smack her across the face and call it back talk. Now, as you're sitting in that van listening to these conversations, did you ever ask your mom, what are we doing? Why are we leaving? Gannon's missing. Why aren't we out looking for him? That kind of stuff? Um, no, I didn't really question her a lot. Why didn't you question your mom? I would be told that, um, like I'm being like disrespectful or like talking back. And what would happen if you were being disrespectful or talking back to your mom? Sometimes she would like backhand me. Where would she backhand you at? To my face. Is that why you just didn't say anything and you sat in the van and went wherever she was driving? Yes. Overruled. All these ways her mother manipulated her and ultimately accused of manipulating Gannon till the end. And many people think it is plausible that Harley did not know because of Letitia's cunning evil ways that Gannon was in the back of that van the whole time as they left Colorado and headed across country, eventually ending up in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Harley's going to talk about Letitia running the air conditioning, even at the beginning of February when it was cold. And she talks about the times that Letitia went missing during those first few days, just like her brother Dakota would testify. Letitia would stay gone for hours. People wonder if Letitia was storing Gannon and the suitcase somewhere in that Colorado cold, in the snow somewhere perhaps, in order to unfortunately preserve his body. And by the time they drove straight across country, barely stopping in these hotels, various hotels across the country, and running the air conditioning like a morgue, perhaps, did that keep Gannon so preserved? Harley was none the wiser. She's going to explain that she never thought her mother would take it this far. But some people have questions about statements like this. When this all happened to me, I was left with literally nothing. <laughs> You would think that if my mom knew that she would do this, she would do something to, like, you know, prepare her daughter or set her daughter up to not have parents or financial help. 
When all this happened to me, Harley said, I was left with literally nothing. You would think that if my mom knew that she would do something like this, you know, she would prepare her daughter, set her daughter up to not have parents or financial help. Harley explained she lost both her parents. She lost her mom when her mom was arrested. She lost her stepdad and Albert Stauk when her mom did what she did. Her whole life changed. She lost her brother. She lost everybody. I lost both my parents. It was like one day you wake up and your whole life changed. I lost my stepdad and I lost my mom and my brother. I lost everybody. So Harley indeed was controlled and harmed even by her own mother. She explained she didn't question her mom because sometimes if she did, that was called back talking and got a backhand to the face, which is abuse. In my prior deep dive videos, Well Into Letitia, which you can find over on Spotify video now, that's where my archives are, plus these current videos, you might remember me discovering someone saying Letitia never wanted to have kids, but it was a good, solid four and a half plus hours worth of testimony for Harley, emotional, there was crying, there was laughter, there was a controversial cross-exam where they brought up Carly's recent GoFundMe, which didn't go over well with some people, the way she phrased things, and that emotional redirect, which caused Harley to break into tears. So all the while, while Harley's pouring her heart out, Letitia is alternately maybe glaring at her, just putting her head down, looking the other way. Some people think she might have flipped a bird again. I don't know. It's hard to see what she's really doing. The day did begin, thank the Lord for answering prayers, Judge Warner threatened Letitia with having a bolt drill through that table and having her handcuffed to it if she keeps up with these hand movements. It's kind of hard to tell when she's just like this with her index finger or the middle finger. But Harley explains her own actions when she was a then 17 year old with this demanding mother, demanding that Harley not speak to the cops at all when Gannon went missing. Letitia sent Harley a bunch of confusing texts, just like these phone calls Letitia has with Albert and her ways of speaking, just very vague on purpose. I hate when people do this. If they start off conversations not telling you who they're talking about, Letitia would send texts, oh, he did this without specifying who the heck is he. So Harley admitted her confusion. It was crazy when Harley admitted that Letitia tried to get Harley to leave little seven-year-old Lena home alone at 10 p.m. at night. What did you eventually do about 10 o'clock p.m. that night? Yeah, so, um... Sorry, now that I'm reading the messages, it's refreshing me, but she had called me um, and told me to leave the house. Um, she tried to get me to leave Lena there and I told her I didn't want to and I feel comfortable doing that. So she told me to bring Lena to um, one of her friend's house. This was when cops were knocking on the door, the 6627 Mandan Drive home and Letitia was God knows where doing God knows what. Harley was home just there with little seven-year-old Lena, a girl she's known since she was like two years old, like her little sister. Letitia sending her texts like, Harley, get out of there, don't answer the door. What the heck are these cops stalking you for? Why are they bombarding you? Blah, blah, blah. Harley, just tell them you're going to Starbucks and leave and just leave Lena there. I just want you and my dogs. So it shows you where Letitia's mind and heart was at. Harley had more maturity as a 17 year old than Tisha back then, or even now as an almost 40 year old. Harley said she didn't feel comfortable leaving Lena home alone. I don't blame her. So she brought Lena with her. The critical, crucial testimony was when Harley and Tisha drove cross country and they stopped in various places like Texas. Maybe they'd move there. Letitia was all over the place, but they ended up in a Candlewood Suites hotel in Pensacola, Florida. That was only an eight minute drive or so away from where Gannon was found eventually under the Escambia Bridge. Harley explained how she was asleep that February 4th night. She's a heavy sleeper. She did not know her mom left the hotel room. After midnight on February 4th, 2020, did your mom ever leave that room? Not that I know of, no. Uh, were you asleep in the entire time or were you awake during times that night, and we're talking 12, 30 in the morning on. I was asleep. 
And although Harley didn't remember some things or said I don't know to other things, she was clear that she did not help her mother throw a suitcase over the Escambia Bridge. I did not, she said. Miss Son, I want to ask you a, a direct question, okay? Okay. Did you help your mother throw that suitcase over a bridge in Pensacola, Florida? No, I did not. On February 4th, 2020? No, I did not. There was actually a little moment of comic relief and laughter that some viewers found inappropriate, others just found it confusing, where Harley was asked, did she know that the statute of limitations on being charged as an accessory to murder had already elapsed? She said no. Her lawyer sounds like he said, yeah, yeah, you did. And that brought out laughter because she was a little bit confused. Were you aware that there was kind of a deadline as to when we needed to make a decision about filing charges on you? No. <laughs> what is the statute of limitations in Colorado on felonies? For most offenses, suspects can't be prosecuted after three years. So three years have passed after this alleged offense, so Harley cannot be charged. But Harley did not get some type of plea deal or immunity like Letitia wanted. Harley finally spoke out and she was given lawyers and they helped guide her, I'm sure, on how to do a proffer arrangement and just tell the truth where you just agree to give information. She would finally talk about the events of January 26th forward. She didn't do it in exchange for, okay, you, you now have immunity. They still could have charged her if they didn't believe her story or if they had found evidence to the contrary. Instead, Harley spoke out because she said it was the right thing to do. And it was only in recent months that Harley finally realized around November or so just how manipulative and bat dung crazy, well, I shouldn't say crazy, crazy is not insane. It's not necessarily the same thing. How manipulative her mother has been and just how the depths of her lies. I mean, just this week, Harley found out that her own biological father, Chance Hunt, he didn't die when someone broke in and killed him like Letitia had told her. What's the point of that lie? He died from an overdose. Was Letitia trying to make Chance seem like some type of hero? Either way, it's not worth it, all these lies upon lies to your own daughter. The most emotional moment, as you saw in the beginning, literally came at the end of all those hours of testimony when her lawyer asked Harley, do you still love your mother? And she couldn't answer it. I wonder what she would have said. As crazy, as insane, as hurtful, as manipulative, as narcissistic as Letitia is, your mother is your mother. And that's got to be so difficult to break away from and finally turn off the love and realize the truth. So the court of public opinion mainly feels sorry for the girl who was a 17 year old back then and is a 20 year old right now, but I realize not everyone does. Some folks still hold a certain amount of ire or hate for Harley. They wanted her to go down with Letitia. They couldn't understand or separate Harley from Letitia. They couldn't understand the manipulation, the control, they think Harley's lying. They didn't like her saying, I don't remember so much, or I don't know. Some even criticized her soft baby tone of voice. And so do you know how it was parked on the morning of January 28th, 2020, before she left to go get Albert out there? No. Did you see it that morning? I don't know. You don't remember or you don't know? I don't remember. But I knew from the beginning, Harley had a baby voice, very quiet, like her voice was stolen by a mother who nonstop rambles her nonsense. But Harley had a soft baby voice even when I found her YouTube videos long ago, so quiet you could barely hear her. I know Harley speaks louder in some of her TikTok videos now, she's come a long way, but that's a whole different thing than testifying in a courtroom. When I was a teenager, I remember testifying as a witness in a courtroom and it was literally an out of body experience. And I really only remember one question asked of me. But for Harley, she just found out from the internet the real cause of death for her own biological dad just this past week. And just the manipulation with angry words, 
When Letitia was trying to explain this candle incident that allegedly happened the night before Gannon disappeared, Harley kept trying to ask more detailed questions like we all would want to know. Letitia texted her daughter, OMG, can you read? I mean, what a, <sighs> you know what? But Letitia was spinning this yarn that all this stuff happened and um, Gannon was out in the streets screaming, he hates his life. So you're about to see the real manipulator, Letitia Stauk, and how she tried to paint Gannon in this bad light. Once she knew Letitia must have made it up in her mind, she had to do away with him. I don't know if she hit him at first because he really spilled a candle or not. And she knew, uh-oh, Albert's going to get me when he gets home or when Gannon tells him what really happens. I need to take this little boy out. And is that when her plotting and planning began, sending these bath salt texts to Albert, claiming Gannon wanted to go to some boy's house to play games, but he had to bring bath salts. He had an older brother who drives a car and sending Harley off to find the planted. I keep thinking of Swiffer Sweeper when they bring up those cigar papers or whatever the heck Letitia no doubt planted in Gannon's backpack. All of it was a pattern. Harley's about to explain how Letitia said she was scared of Gannon that night. January 26. You feel so bad for this little boy. Harley came home. The house felt weird. She admitted. Letitia had the windows open downstairs. Letitia's claiming she was afraid of little Gannon. It was cold down there, and Gannon was the only one who slept downstairs in that basement that night. Harley went upstairs to sleep with her mom. Her mom was up and gone by 8 a.m. or so. Lena was upstairs too. So Gannon was down there in that cold basement, hopefully not in too much pain, but Letitia already had the wheels in motion of what she would do that very next day. Letitia had even faked ovarian cancer. Anyway, I'm going to get you into it now with no interruptions. You can watch the full thing, the full testimony. I've only edited out the long recesses, so it's more compact and it's only Harley's testimony, so you can watch it. Before we do that, we'll do like we always do on Plunder's channel. Read something inspiring to help balance off the evil of all these cases. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes in Christ as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. Let's watch this whole thing. If you get me, you get Jesus. We're a package deal. Ain't no splitting us up. No matter who understands and believes or who doesn't, God loves us all. Thank you so much. Watch this. All right, Ms. Hunt, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, ma'am. <clears throat> a little farther forward. Little back it's okay. It's all right. You swear from the testimony about to give this man will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your steps as you step into the stand. Good morning, Miss Hunt. Good morning. Could you please introduce yourself to the jury and spell your last name for the record? Harley Hunt, H-U-N-T. Very difficult for you right now. <laughs> we're gonna get through this, okay? I'm gonna ask you some questions and we're gonna have a conversation. Okay. And I want you to do the best you can, all right? Uh, everything we say is being recorded, so if you can, speak as loud as possible. You can also pull that microphone closer to you, if you like. Thanks. Okay. How old are you, Harley? I'm 20. And who's your mom? Letitia Stauk. Is it the same Letitia Stauk who's seated to my left here in the middle of these two gentlemen? Yes. 
May the record reflect identification of the defendant subject to cross-examination? The record will so reflect. Go ahead. Have you lived with your mom your entire life? Yes. Uh, when was the last time you saw her in person? Um, the day that she was arrested. Would that have been March 2nd, 2020? Yes. And was that in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina? Yes. Uh, do you live out in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina now? I do. What do you do out there? I go to college. What are you studying? Nursing. How much longer do you have for that? A year and a half. Pretty excited about that? Yeah. But things going well in school? So far, yes. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about your family. Back in 2015-2014 uh, time frame, uh, did your mother marry someone named Albert Stalk? Yes. Uh, and did Albert have kids of his own? Yes. Uh, what's his kids' names? Do you remember? Lena and Gannon. Okay. May I approach her? You may. I show you what's been introduced in evidence as People's Exhibit One. Recognize that person? Yes. Is that Gannon Stalk? Yes. And Lena Stalk is his younger sister? Yes. What was your relationship with Gannon Stalk? We had a good relationship. Of course, we had like a age difference. Um, but I would always try to be there for them when I could. Do you remember how old you were when Albert and your mom got married? I think I was 12, 12 or so. How old was Gannon when that happened? Do you remember? Um, he was really young, four or five. And Lena was even younger than that, I would imagine. You remember how old Lena was? Like t two, maybe, or so. And so did you also have a, a relationship with Lena? Yes, I did. Uh, was she like a sister to you? Yes. And was Gannon like a brother to you? Yes. Uh, Although there's an age difference, uh, especially probably when you got into your teenage years, right? Correct. Uh, I would imagine they may have been a little annoying for you a little bit. <laughs> yes. Is that fair to say? Okay. Um, what about your mom's relationship with Gannon um, over the years? Uh, can you start out perhaps when Albert and your mom got married? How was that relationship between Gannon and your mom? Yeah, so... Um... It was different at first because we were like a blended family. Um, so we were just getting used to, you know, more people in our life. Um, they had an, like an okay relationship. There were problems here and there, but. Um, was there a point in time when Albert and your mom first got married where Albert didn't have custody of the kids? Yes. Uh, and were things a little easier when the kids weren't around? Um, I wouldn't say easier. Having to go back and forth between, you know, the weekends and everything with them were difficult because, you know, Albert, of course, wanted his kids full time with him. So I just remember there being like a lot of problems with that, but... At some point, did Albert get custody of both Lena and Gannon? Yes. And were they living with you all more of a full-time basis? Yes. And did you observe the relationship between everyone at that time? Yes. Uh, did it seem to be, uh, for lack of a better term, a normal family situation? Yes. Okay. Um, what about your relationship with Albert? How'd that go? He had a good relationship. Um, you know, when for Albert first came in, it's when my dad passed away. So, you know, that was difficult for me at first because I didn't want like my father to feel replaced. That's how I felt like in my heart. Um, but as time grew, we got closer. What was your father's name? Chance. Hunt? Yes. Uh, do you remember when he died? Yes, uh, when I was 12 in Oct October. So would that have been October 2000? Help me out with the math here. 12 or 14. Sometime in that time frame? Yeah. <clears throat> when your father passed away, were Albert and your mom married? Yes. 
Uh, do you know how your dad passed away? Yes. How did he die? An overdose. And when did you first learn that? This past week. What were you told how he died before? That someone came in and robbed him and killed him. And who told you that? My mom. Had she ever <clears throat> told you the, the truth as to how your dad died? No. How'd you learn about that then? Um, the internet. This case has got an enormous amount of attention on social media and the internet. Is that right? Yes. And you have actually gotten a lot of attention on the internet because of this case. Is that right? Yes. Very difficult you being here right now, testifying in this court. Yes. Is Albert Stout, do you see him in the courtroom? I do. Seated in the front row in the gallery here? Um, yes. When uh, Albert and your mom got married, where were you living? Myrtle Beach. And had, how long had you lived there before you moved to another place? Do you remember? I do not remember the exact time. No. In the beginning of Albert's and your mom's marriage, was Albert Stout going to training a lot? And was he away from the house quite a bit uh, because of his job? Yes. Uh, and were there often times where it'd be just you and your mom in the house while Albert was out training? Yes. Were there other times where it'd be you, your mom, and Lena and Gannon? Um, only when he was like at work or training, yeah. How did your mom feel about, um, or do you know, did your mom ever talk to you about how she felt about Albert being gone all the time and being at training? Yes, um, she wanted him to be home more, especially when we had the kids with us. And did she tell you whether or not she liked being at home alone with the kids? She did not, no. At some point, did you move to uh, Charleston, South Carolina? Yes, we did. Why did you move to Charleston, South Carolina? For their job purposes. Whose jobs? Um, both my, my mom and Albert. My mom wanted to teach at a new school and Albert found, was able to find like a job position there too. And did your mom tell you why she wanted to teach at a new school? Just to get away from Myrtle Beach. Did your mom want to move frequently? Yes. Uh, was that pretty constant throughout your relationship with her? Yes. And so how long did you live in Charleston? Not long, maybe a year, if that. And where did you go from Charleston? Back to Myrtle Beach. And why did you go back to Myrtle Beach? Because my mom didn't like being in Charleston. And did she tell you that? Yes. And so... Were you having to switch schools from Myrtle Beach to Charleston and then back to Myrtle Beach? Yes, so I actually went back to school as well um, when we stayed in Charleston too. And did you end up graduating from high school early? I did, yes. Tell the jury about that. How'd that happen? I eventually, when we moved to Alaska, I did online school. So I did two years of that. So I ended up doing three years of high school. So you graduated essentially from being in Alaska doing online studies? Yes. And, and we're gonna get there in a minute, okay? okay? Do you remember how long you lived in Myrtle Beach the second time? No. Do, do you know whether or not uh, your mom and Al Stalk actually bought a house in Myrtle Beach? Yes. Tell the jury about that. We, once we moved back, they bought a house there that we had over a course of time, also when we lived in Alaska. Okay. And was that the first home uh, that was purchased between Al and your mom? Yes, that was purchased. 
And at some point, uh, did Albert Stout get orders to go to Alaska? Yes. Uh, were you in the home at that time? Yes. The home that you purchased? Yes. Uh, tell us the jury about that. What were the circumstances? What was the plan for you and your mother and the kids when Albert was sent to Alaska um, to be stationed there? Yeah, so he was stationed there. Um, and we still had our house in Myrtle Beach and we would go back and forth from being in Alaska and Myrtle Beach. And when you say we, who are we talking about? Me and my mom. Do you know where the kids were at this point in time? Sometimes they would be with us in Alaska and sometimes they would be back in Myrtle Beach with their mom. And did you know their mother, Landon? Yes. Uh, had you met her on occasion? Yes. Okay. And you see her in the courtroom today? Yes. Sitting in the second row back here? Yes. Was this in the time frame around 2017, 2018, when Albert was stationed in Alaska? Yes. And you said that you would go to Alaska on occasion and go back to Myrtle Beach. Um, and you, you indicated it was you and your mom, right? Correct. How often would you guys go to Alaska? We would stay in Alaska for like a month or so, and then we fly back to Myrtle Beach for a couple of weeks and then fly back to Alaska. Were you ever, did you fully ever move to Alaska with your mother? No. And, and why is that? Um, Because we still had our house in Myrtle Beach, so we would go back and forth. Did your mom ever talk to you about moving to Alaska? What do you mean? Well, did she ever tell you whether or not she liked being in Alaska? Oh, she did not like being in Alaska, no. And what did she tell you about that? Because it was cold and she couldn't work there and there was nothing to do. At some point, were you up in Alaska with your mom uh, and discussions were talked about moving to Colorado? Yes. Tell the jury about that. I remember after like three or four years or so, um, Albert found out that he could move to Colorado and be stationed there. Um, and we all were excited because it was better than being in Alaska. Do you know whose idea that was? My mom's. And why do you say that? Because there was an incident that happened in Alaska. I wasn't told much, but... Uh, something that didn't want her or Albert to be in Alaska anymore? Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no. I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. Okay. It's all right. And so uh, talk about the move to Colorado. When this decision was made to go to Colorado, did you still have this house in Myrtle Beach? We did at first, and then they sold the house. After it was sold, we drove everything to Colorado. Did you have to fly back to Myrtle Beach and then drive across the country to Colorado? Yes. And was it Colorado Springs where you were going to? Yes. What was Albert doing as all this was happening? Do you know? I don't remember. Was he still in Alaska? I don't remember. Um, I don't know. That's fine. Uh, do you remember moving into the house 6627 Mandon Drive here in Colorado Springs? Yes. When you moved in, was Albert with you initially? No. Well, tell the jury about that. When did Albert come to Colorado Springs to live with you and your mother? So when we got to Colorado after driving there, um, the kids came at some point and then a couple weeks later, Albert came. And would this, would this have been uh, early 2019 yes. timeframe? Now, how long did you live in that house before Gannon's death? Do you remember? A year. We moved in January of 2019. Was this year timeframe the first time that all of you were together during 
Albert and your mom's marriage? Yes. And first extended time for a year? Yes. Had you had an opportunity to see Albert and your mom together on numerous occasions? Yes. What was their relationship like? And I'm talking about when you're in Colorado, 2019 on. It started to feel like we were a family again because everybody was there and like we were together. Did they ever argue? Yes. Uh, how often would they argue? Often. And how do you know they were arguing? Because you could hear them arguing. And what would you do when that would happen? Um, Anna and Erlena would come ask me why they were arguing. So like they would just come to my room and I would turn the TV up or something because I didn't want them to have to listen to them argue. Uh, did you ever get pulled into these arguments? Yes. Tell the jury about that. Um, they would be arguing about something and then it would be like, well, isn't this true? Or like ask my opinion, try to get my say so on it. And who would ask you your opinion to get your say so? My mom. Did you have, ever ask your mom, say, why do you pull me into these arguments to get my opinion? Yeah, I just said, like, I don't want to be a part of this. And ha what did she say in response to that? Would just keep asking and then they would keep arguing. I want to go forward to January of 2020 now, right? Um, well, let me go back to Christmas of 2019. Uh, did Gannon and uh, Lena, were they with their mom during the holiday period? Yes, I believe we celebrated Christmas early with them. Did they go back to South Carolina to be with their mom over the holidays? Yes. Uh, did they eventually come back? Yes. Uh, and would that have been now January 2020 when they came back to the house? Yes. Now, was your mom working here in Colorado? Yes. Where was she working? Um, at a school. Do you remember what school? I don't remember the name of it, no. French Elementary sound familiar? Yes. Was that the school she was working at? Yes. Um, in January of 2020, do you know whether or not Albert and your mom were planning to go on a cruise to celebrate their anniversary? Yes. Tell the jury about that. Um, it was a couple day cruise that they were planning to go on. Um, I was towards the end of the month. Okay. And did they go on a cruise? They did, yes. Did they, where did they go to go to, on this cruise, do you know? No. Um, what was going to happen with you and Lena and Gannon while they were gone on a cruise? She hired a babysitter. And did you know this babysitter? No. Do you know why she hired a babysitter? No. And you were how old at the time? 17. And had you watched the kids before? Yes. Um, had you watched the kids overnight before? Yes. Uh, how did that, uh, did you ever ask your mom, why are you getting a babysitter? I'm here. Yeah. How'd she respond to that? I don't remember. I just remember being like really upset about it. Do you remember this babysitter's name? No. Had you ever seen her before? No. Have you ever seen her after? No. When they get back from the cruise, uh, how long were they gone? Do you remember? I think it was the weekend. The weekend. And so it was a was it a three day weekend or a long weekend or was it just Saturday Sunday? I don't remember exactly. Uh, when they come back, how was Albert's and your mom's relationship at that time? It seemed fine. I think his mom came to visit after that too. When you say his mom, are you talking about Albert's mom? Albert's mom, yes. And how long did she stay? Only a few days. On January 25th of 2020, 
uh, did Albert have to go to another training? Yes. Uh, tell the jury about that. Do you know where he was going? I think it was Oklahoma. And do you know how long he was to be gone? No. Was it longer than a couple days? Yes. Was it longer than a week? I don't know. Okay, not, not a problem. So do you remember when he actually left to go on that training? You mean like the exact day or? Yeah, if you, if you do, you know. No, it was like close to the time that his mom came. It was like a couple days after, I think. Did he leave with his mom when he went to the training? I don't remember. Okay. Why don't we do it this way? Do you remember January 26th of 2020? Yes. And was that the day that you were supposed to go on a hike with your mother, Gannon, and Lana? Yes. Did Albert leave the day before? I don't remember. Okay. Hey, remember, that's, that's fine. Uh, was Albert Stalk there on the day that you were going to go on a hike? No. Right. So was he in his in Oklahoma on his way to Oklahoma or do you know? Yes. You just don't know when he left. Right. Is that fair? All right. So January 26, 2020, that's a Sunday. You recall that? Yes. Did you recall going to church with your mother and Gannon and Lena? No, Sunday? we did not. And is that something you would remember if you did go to church that day? Yes. And on January 26, 2020, were you scheduled to go to work that day? No, I was not scheduled. Did you go to work that day? Yes, I got called in. And tell the jury about that. Where were you working and why did you get called in? I was working at, at Massage Envy. Um, and I think they were like short staffed or somebody called out. That's why I got called in. And was that unusual? No. Mm -hmm. uh, would other employees get called in kind of last second if someone calls in sick, that kind of thing? Yes. And what Massage Envy were you working at back in January of 2020? First in Maine. Where is that within the city? Do you know? Um, it's near like shopping complexes. I don't remember exactly where it was or road names or anything. Is it in the northern part of the city? Yes. Off of the Powers Drive over yes. there? Okay. How long would it take you to get to work? 25, 30 minutes. And you were living on kind of the south side of the city? Right. All right. So you go to work that day. So obviously you didn't get to go on the hike. Do you know whether or not your mom and Gannon and Lena went on a hike? They did. How do you know that? Um, she told me and I got sent pictures. Uh, and how, whose idea was it to go on this hike? Do you remember? No. But it was a, fan, it was a planned event where you were actually going to go on it as well? Right. Did your mom tell you anything about what had happened on the hike, in particular with Gannon, during while they're out at the hike? Yes, um, she said that he had used the bathroom, like in his pants, so they had to leave, go home. And how were you communicating with her? Through text. And do you know where they went to go on a hike? I think it was Garden of the Gods, but I could be wrong, I don't remember. Your may approach a witness. You may. I'm going to hand you what's been marked at 2.05. Do you guys, I don't know who's joining. I approach on. You may. Go ahead. I'm going to hand you People's Exhibit 205, which is a notebook. Recognize that notebook? Yes. Do you have an opportunity to look at that last night? Yes. And do you know what that notebook is? Yes. And what is it? It's text messages between my mom and I. And are those text messages uh, between January 25th, 2020 at 3.42 p.m. all the way January 29th, 2020 to 4.27 p.m.? Yes. 
And does those text messages in that notebook accurately reflect the conversations that you were having with your mom via text messages during that time period? Yes. This time we'd move to admit People's Exhibit 205. Okay. Exhibit 205 will be admitted. Go ahead. Now, in People's Exhibit 205, we're going to publish that and go through them, okay, Ms. Okay. Hunt? Uh, would that help you kind of establish a timeline as to when conversations are being made? Yes. You can go ahead and publish 205, please. And Ms. Hunt, you can either look at the notebook okay. or the TV screen, whatever is easier for you. So on the first page, we see a text on January 25th at 9.09 p.m. Uh, do you see that? Yes. And do you know what that's regarding? Something about our dogs. Now, for the jury's benefit, there's a blue bubble and a green bubble up on the screen. Who is the blue bubble re reference to? I am the blue bubble. So that's coming from your phone? Yes. And the green bubble? From my mom. And this, what we see on the screen behind us is looks like a picture. See that? Yes. What is that picture of, you know? Of one of our dogs. And do you know why it says maybe Nicole there on the green bubble? Do not. But you know that's your mom's phone number, right? <laughs> yes. And so do you remember having this conversation with her back on the 25th? Yes. There's the next message says uh, they are saying it may have been his daughters. Do you remember what that was with reference to? No. Is this about the same time when Kobe Bryant, the basketball player, died in a helicopter accident? Yes. Uh, and were you and your mom discussing that prior to you going to work that day? Yes. Uh, do you know that's in reference to uh, perhaps Kobe Bryant's daughters being in, on the helicopter? Yes. And do you remember having that conversation now that I've said those things? I do. Okay. If we can scroll down, please. Now, we have a blue bubble that says daughter up at the top. Um, is that your phone number at the time? Yes. So you say, oh, no. Is that right? Yes. Can you scroll down, please? That was with him? Is that what you say? Oh, no, yes. Okay. Can we go ahead and scroll down a little further, please? One up to now. Can you go back? I'm sorry. Back uh, right there. All right, so we're now at January 26, 2020 at 5.11 p.m. You're where at at this time? Do you remember? I'm at work. And you know where your mom and the kids are? On a hike. So you say where you're going, right? Yes. Are you there at the 5.11 p.m.? Yes. And you can look at the TV if it's easier to, to see it, okay? Okay. She says, get good. Can we scroll down? She says, food. For that? Yes. And why are you asking her where? Anywhere close to my work, I want chips. Because I was hungry. You wanted your mom to bring you some food, right? Yes. Do you remember having this conversation with her back then? Yes. Go ahead. Now, here she says... No, LOL, we are going up the street because Gannon pooped his pants. Is that the first time you hear about Gannon pooping his pants? For that day, yes. Had that happened before? Previously, yes. 
Did Dan have some stomach issues? Uh, yes. That wasn't too surprising to you when you saw this message? No. Was it surprising to your mom? No. You say OMG, what does that stand for? Oh my gosh. I think everyone knows that, but I hope you understand why I asked that, okay? Uh, can we go ahead and scroll down, please? So does she, what do, what do you think she means when she says, yeah, all that movie? Um, like exercising or moving around. Did that in the past cause issues with gain and stomach and cousin to have accidents? To my knowledge, yes. How did you get that knowledge? What I was told. Who told her? I don't know. Remember? I don't know because it was said multiple times, so I don't I don't remember. We can go ahead and scroll down, please. Okay, let's stop right there, please. So now we're at the point, it's January 26 at 9.54 p.m. Are you still at work? Yes. Remember getting this text message that we see on the screen now that says, do panic, but Gannon turned on a candle downstairs set the downstairs on fire. I had to get the dogs and Lena out and run back downstairs and jump on him with a cover and put it out. I kept jumping on it. Yes. What were you doing at Massage Ambi? What was your role? I worked at the front desk. So did you, were you able to read these as soon as you got them or with customers or what was going on? We were, uh pretty busy often, so I was probably reading it in between. And then she says uh, at 9.54 and 52 seconds, he is fine, he is scared, and saying sorry and freaking out. Do you remember getting that? Yes. And do you remember how you responded to these text messages from your mom? Yes, I was reading them pretty quickly because I was at work and I thought she was saying that the fire was on our dogs. And you know that because the text messages are coming up, or do you remember doing that? I remember, yeah. And tell us about your dogs. Look, how many dogs did you have? We had two dogs, a French bulldog and an English bulldog. And when did you get those dogs, do you remember? Um, a little before Christmas. So shortly before all this happened? Yes. So December 19, 2019? I think it was closer to like November. And do you currently still have those dogs? Yes. What's their names? Sadie and Chance. What kind of dog is Sadie? A French Bulldog. Chance is? An English Bulldog. And Chance was named after who? My dad. And we can go ahead and scroll down. So you say the fire was on Chance? Yes. Now, are you saying this because you didn't really get a chance to read the text or what's going on here? Yes, I didn't really get a chance to read it, and it was just like a lot, and I was so confused what was going on. Would Gannon have a habit of lighting candles and hanging out in the basement by himself? No. Do you ever seen him light a candle and sit on the couch hanging out next to a candle? No. So eventually when we scroll down, we'll see that your mom makes it real clear that it was Gannon that was involved in this candle. What were you thinking when you were getting these text messages? I, none of the texts were fully clear. So they were really confusing at first. So I was kind of asking to elaborate. Um, and did she actually send you a picture of the area where this candle supposedly fell down? Yes. And do we see that now on the TV screen? Um, yes. It says it was sent January 26, 2020 at 9.57 p.m.? Yes. Can we go ahead and scroll down again, please? <laughs> so 
she says when you uh, ask about Chance, she says, no, Chance was upstairs. The house is smoking. Do you remember her saying that to you? Yes. Hold down, please. Said the first was on chance. What did you mean by that? I meant fire. So did you think there was two fires or? I thought that's what she meant the whole time that the fire was on chance because she never said any names. Let's go down. A fire and then she says, I jumped on him with a cover. Remember that? Yes. You ever talk to your mom about this text message on the phone or in person about what the heck are you talking about? What happened here? I did once I got home. Talk about that when we get there, okay? okay. Let's go ahead and scroll down and look at the text message. Mm -hmm. And so you say, oh, okay, and she says, I never said chance. Remember getting that? Yes. You said jumped on him and you said OMG again, right? Yes. Says yes, but never said chance. Read again. Remember saying that? Yes. But I just had a heart attack. Yes. Why did you a heart attack? But why did you say I just had a heart attack? Because I thought that she meant chance and still no names were said so i don't know who she was referring to at that point did you eventually uh as we'll see as we scroll down find out that it was gannon she was referring to yes obviously when you get home you find that out right yeah so you're asking where the other dog is, Sadie, right? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Yes, sorry. Uh, and your mom responds, she was in the chair. Yes. So you're concerned about the dogs? Yes. Go ahead and scroll down some more. And then you say, OMG, by the fire. Right? Yes. So your mom says that Lena grabbed Sadie and I grabbed Chance R, NR, right? Yes. And did you talk to her about that? When you... Yes. Dance, now all of us were upstairs. Do you remember her saying that? Yes. Can you scroll down? He was downstairs. <clears throat> you know who she was talking about when she said he was downstairs at that point? Not until the next message. So you say Gannon was downstairs? Yes. She says yes, right? Yes. During this conversation, is that the first time that you realize that Gannon may have been burned or was part of this fire situation? Yes. Yeah. OMG. You ask her, how did he not get over? Why yes. did you ask her that? Because at this point, I'm still confused of what happened or how it happened. Was there some confusion based on your experience of Gannon not being the type of kid that would hang out mm -hmm. by a candle in the basement? Yes. Scroll down. As he said, he must have fell asleep. You say, so it wasn't? I think you meant to say knocked over? Is yes. I don't even know how you pronounce that word. <laughs> And you can go ahead and scroll down. He says, yes, OMG, can you read? 
That was like a typical mother, teenage daughter text conversation going on here, right? Yes. Other than the obvious uh, fire situation. Yes. So what did you, how did you respond to that? You know? Yes. But she goes on and says, he must have knocked it over while asleep unless he was awake and lied. That sound like something Gannon would do? Um, I don't know, because kids will lie sometimes, so I can't really answer that. Okay, not a problem. You can go ahead and scroll down some more, please. She says, but he acted sorry for sure. And you say A-W-W. What does A-W-W stand for? Oh. Like O? Oh? No, like oh. Ah, yeah. okay. Right. So do you remember about what time you got off work on the 26th during this text messaging process here? Yeah, it was late around like 1030 or so. If the information from Massage Envy says you clocked out at 10.18 p.m. on January 26th, would that be accurate? Objection, yes. you Just refreshing, Your Honor. Yeah, you, know, you can ask her what time she thinks she clocked out. Do you know approximately what time you clocked out and left work that day? Yes, a little after 10 sometime. In between 10 and 10.30? Yes. Um, do you remember what, what time you got home? It takes me like 25 minutes or so to get home, so a little bit of time after that. Did you talk to your mom on your way home uh, from Massage Envy that night? I normally tell her that I'm leaving, so probably yes. And so what do you see when you get home? Describe to the jury what you see in the house when you got home from work. Um, I get home. My mom and Lena are in the living room and they're telling me about the fire. Um, Gannon wasn't upstairs at this point. So who you said they are telling you were both Lena and your mom telling you about what happened downstairs? Yes. What did your mom tell you at this point when you get home? She told me that the candle was knocked over. Um, she thinks that he was playing on his Nintendo and he wasn't supposed to be, so that maybe that's how he knocked it over. Um, that after the fire, they ran outside. And she called her fireman friend and asked if the fumes in the house were okay for us to go back inside, and they said yes. And she said that when they were in the street, Gannon was screaming that he hates his life and screaming different things. What did you think about that last part your mother just told you about Gannon? life? I didn't think that the candle thing was a big deal, so it was just still so like confusing. Was your mother concerned about Albert finding out about this and being upset about it? Normally, Albert's not the one to get mad about, like, stuff getting messed up, so. When she told you about Gannon going out in the street and yelling that he hates his life and things like that, did that sound like the Gannon that you knew? No, he hasn't done that before. You said that it was Lena and your mom upstairs when you got home on the 26th after work. Mm -hmm. Do you know where Gannon was at? Downstairs. Did you go downstairs? Yes. What did you see when you went downstairs? I am laying in his bed. Did you go into his room? Um, by the doorway. Was he asleep? I don't remember. Did you talk to him? No. Was the light on in his room? I don't know. Is that the last time you saw him? Yes. 
Were there window? Were there any windows open in the basement when you went down there? Yes, the windows were open. It was cold down there. How many windows were open down in the basement? I don't know. It was January twenty sixth. At you know about what time it is now when you went down to Gannon's room? It was a little later because my mom was like, "Let's go tell Gannon good night." So that's why we went down there. Anything unusual about your mom saying, "Let's go tell Gannon good night"? Not something that. She normally would do. It's not something she would normally do. Correct. That's surprising to you when she said that. Yes. She go down there with you when you went to Gannon's room. Yes, we both went down there. Do you recall your mom talking to Gannon? She said good night to him. She was like good night. Do you know whether or not Gannon responded? I don't remember. No. So was Gannon's bedroom window open as well? I don't know. Was it cold down in the basement? Yes. Did you sleep down in the basement that night? No. Where was your room within the house? In the basement. Would it have been close to Gannon's room, or was it like on the other side of the basement area? On the other side of the basement. Was your room cold in there? I don't remember. Why'd you sleep upstairs? Because it was cold downstairs. You could still smell like the fumes, and like everything just felt like everything in the house just felt weird. Why did it feel weird? Because my mom made the comments. Um, she was like, "Gannon's acting weird. I don't know what's wrong with him." Um, she said that she was scared. Who else slept upstairs? Lena. Who, is there anyone else in the house? No. So it's you, your mom, Lena, and Gannon. Yes. Gannon's the only one sleeping in the basement. Yes. It's cold down there. Yes. Are we talking freezing cold, or was it just colder than the upstairs? Colder than the upstairs. That's why you didn't sleep down there. Yeah. And where did you sleep? In particular, what bed? In my parents' room. Did you sleep with your mom in the same bed? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Good. Um, Young, if you could find a reasonable breaking point in the next five minutes, please. This is a good breaking point right now, Judge. If you like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our morning recess until ten forty-five. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, and we'll see you back at ten forty-five. All rise for the jury, please. Ms. Hunt, if you would resume your seat in the witness stand, I remind you, ma'am, that you're still under oath. Thank you. You may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Alicia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. When we took our break, we were in the midst of uh, the testimony of Ms. Hunt. That's where we will resume. With that, Mr. Young. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Hunt, there's a, a few more text messages from January 26th that I want to cover with you okay. before we go into the 27th. Uh, your book should be opened up to uh, January 26th at 10.30, or excuse me, 10.10 p.m. Do you see that? You see a text from your mother that says, my arm is burnt jumping on him? Yes. Are you still at work when you get this text? Yes. So you say OMG. Can we go ahead and scroll down, please? And you say the fire was on Gannon. Yes. Are things becoming now clearer for you as to what <clears throat> she was talking about in her text message <laughs> that didn't work? Yes. Go scroll down. Go ahead and go down a little bit further again. And she responds, no, the cover was. Do you remember that? Yes. Scroll down, please. He was wrapped in it. Remember her saying that? Yes. Now, when you got home, I know we talked about you know, what you saw, but... Did you see any injuries to your mom? No. Did you see any burn marks on her arm? I don't remember. 
remember. When you got that prior text about her saying that she burned her arm jumping on him, were you concerned that your mother may have been burned during this fire? Yes. Did you ask her about it when you got home? No. Did she say anything about being burned when you got home? I don't remember. Can go ahead and scroll down. She says, I jumped on him, though, because he had the cover around him. Do you remember her saying that? Yes. <laughs> Scroll down. They say OMGG has. And it looks like we can scroll down again that she sent you a picture. Do you remember what that picture was? Of the couch being burnt. Was it the floor area with some blankets around what appears to be a burned area of the carpet? Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Do you remember getting that that night? Yes. Go ahead and scroll down, please. And you ask, what is that? Did she ever answer that? No. Okay. And so do you remember about what time you went to bed that night after you got home? No. Do you remember whether or not you had to work in the morning? I did, yes. And what time did you have to be at work now on the 27th of January, 2020? By 8.30. That normal working time in the morning? Yes. We can scroll down now to a text from January 27th, 2020. Again, the blue is you. Do you remember making that text? Are you here? Yes. Why did you ask your mother if she is here? Remember? I don't remember, no. When you say here, are you referring to the house? Yes. Were you still at home at 7.20 a.m. on January 27th, 2020? Yes. Do you remember about what time you left the house? Around 8 o'clock. So earlier you testified that you slept in the same bed with your mother that night. Mm -hmm. Does that give you any context as to why you might text her and say, are you here? I don't remember why I said it. Um, I didn't see her. So she wasn't in bed when you woke up maybe? Yes. You know where she went or where she was at? No. Can you scroll down, please? It looks like that she texts you another picture, uh, January 27th at 9.05 a.m. Do you recall getting a picture from her then? Yes. Do you know what that picture is? Of our dog. Okay. Do you know which dog it is? Yes, Sadie. Okay. Is that the first time you had any communication with your mom that morning? Yes. Would you have been at work by then? Yes. I know it's been over three years, but do you recall whether or not uh, your mom's vehicle was at the residence when you went to work that day? I don't remember. What kind of car did your mom drive? A black Volkswagen Tiguan. Uh, fairly new? Yes. Was it under lease? Yes. What kind of car were you driving? A Volkswagen Jetta. And what kind of car was Albert driving when he was home? A um, Nissan truck. Remember what color that truck was? Red. Right. So you go to work. Are you at work then when you get this picture of, did you say that was Sadie? Yes. So you are at work then? Yes. All right. And what was your shift going to be that day? Do you recall? What time would you get off? I don't remember. It was like a morning shift, so it lasts until 4, 4.30 or so. Okay. We can go ahead and scroll down, please. So when you get the image of Sadie, you say, OMG, and she says, she was like, hmm, it's warm. Let me try. 
Is your mom talking about Sadie? Yes. Okay. Did you know that when you got this message? Yes. Can you scroll down, please? Then on January 27th at 9.27 a.m., your mother texts you, OMG, something isn't right. Do you remember getting that text message? Yes. Do you have any idea what that meant? No. Do you have any idea what that means now? Yes. What does that mean now? Um, she sent me screenshots of text messages after that. And what were the screenshots uh, and what text messages were they? Um, it was a conversation between her and Albert, I think. Remember what the substance of that conversation was? Um, about bath salts or hanging out with Gannon's older friend. How did the bath salts and the older friend relate to Gannon in this text message? It was said that that's what he had mentioned. Did you ever know Gannon to use bath salts or have any association with bath salts in the entire time that you knew him? No. Okay, if we can scroll down, please. And so we see now images on an attachment that was sent from your mom. Uh, it looks like it was sent to you at 9.29 a.m. on January 27th. Is that the screenshots that you just talked about that she sent you? Yes. What were you thinking was going on here? I mean, had she ever sent you any messages like this before in the past? No. Any messages related to how Gannon and his activities and what's going on with Gannon ever sent to you in the past by your mother? Not like the messages, no. Was it a shock for you to see that somehow Gannon may have been related to bath salts? Yes. Why? I didn't even know we had bath salts, and I wouldn't even think he would know what those are. Did you know what they were back then? Yes. What were they? Put them in the bathtub. <laughs> Ask a stupid question, you get right. <laughs> um, did you know whether or not kids were using bath salts at this time frame as a drug or a method to get high, that kind of thing? I did not at the time, no. Did you later learn about that? Yes. But when you get this message, you didn't connect that as to being Gannon may have been trying to get high on bath salts or something? No. Okay. Can you scroll down, please? So you didn't respond to that, but at uh, 4.20 p.m., you text your mother who just got off. Yes. What is that? I always text her when I like leave or when I get off. Do that pretty routinely? Yes. And how did she respond to you saying just got off? She said yay. Um, had you talked to her on the phone at any point up until this time frame when you got off of work? No. Had you had any idea what her plans were that day on January 27th, 2020, when you were at work? No. Um, I did get a text message, though, from Gannon's phone. Let's talk about that. Okay. Okay. Um, my approach witness. Me. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as People's Exhibit 2. And that's a plastic plastic sleeve, so you can pull the contents out. And I'll ask if you recognize that. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yes. What is People's Exhibit 204? Um, it's a it message is? between me and Gannon's phone. Okay. And is that what you're talking about? Is that the message you got uh, indicating what it says here? Yes. Uh, and what was your understanding of what this message meant to you? 
um, that my mom left her phone at home and if I needed anything to text Gannon's phone. And does that help refresh your memory as to what was going on on the 27th while you were at work? Yes. And does these messages accurately reflect the conversation you had with regards to these two phones back on January 27th, 2020? Yes. Move to admit People's Exhibit 204. Defense. Exhibit 204 will be admitted. Go ahead. And so rather than publish it, um, I just, I'm going to ask you to read it. Is, is the messages from Gannon's phone, is that in green on People's Exhibit 204? Yes. Could you read the messages um, and at what time you got those uh, from Gannon's phone? At 1037, he messaged Tisha left phone at home. If you need her, text me. And then at 120, messaged you okay, miss you. And did you respond to that particular message? Yes, at 124, I said, yes, miss you too. So if you needed to get a hold of your mom, you knew you needed to call Gannon's phone. Is that what this is all about? Yes. Uh, did you know whether or not where they were going or what they were doing when uh, the message came in saying uh, she left her phone at home? At the time, no. Uh, was that unusual for your mother to leave her own phone at home when she went out running errands or to do whatever she was going to do? Yes. Why was that unusual? She always brought her phone everywhere. Uh, did you think it was unusual at the time you got this text message from Gannon's phone? saying, hey, Tisha left her phone at home. Call me if you need something. No. Why do you think it's unusual now? Um, it's just weird how this particular day she left her phone at home. And you say that because when you get off of work and get home, Gannon wasn't there? Yes. So how long did it take you to get home on the 27th, 2020? Do you recall? No. What happens when you get home? When I get home, mom's upstairs, just have a normal conversation. And she tells me that she looked up on the internet how to like remove fire stains from the carpet. So she wanted me to go to the store and get that stuff for her. Who did you see home when you got home? I remember seeing my mom home and then Lena came in after. Did you see Gannon? No. Think anything unusual about Gannon not being home when you get off work? I did ask her, I said, where is Gannon at? And she said that he was with one of his friends and that she told him to come back by a certain time because we were going to dinner. So if you text your mother that you just got off at 4.20 p.m., what time do you think you got home based on that text message? 4.50. Uh, if we, if we have People's Exhibit 47 that shows you getting home at 4.37 p.m., would that be about right? Yeah. Do you know that there's ring video in your neighborhood and you see when cars are going? And yes. So if you get home about 4.37 p.m., uh, where was Lena at when you got home? Um, she was outside playing. I remember her coming in with like a bike. And what time, do you know what time she got out of school? Elementary gets out at like 2.30. She ride the bus to and from school? Yes. Would it be unusual for her to be outside from getting off the bus up until you got home from work? Um, yes, because normally there's like a routine. Um, kids would come home and like get snacks, do their homework, and then they would go outside and play. So when you get home uh, that day, what was your mother doing? I don't remember. I just remember talking to her before I left. Do you remember about how long you were in the house before you left? No. 
Do you ever go down to the basement? No. Lena ever go down to the basement? Not that I know of, no. Your mother ever go down to the basement while you're at home? I know she did after, maybe, I'm not sure. So do you remember how about how long you were in the house before you left? No, it was very like brief. If the video says it was about 15 to 16 minutes by the time you pull up and then leave again with Lena, would that be accurate? Yes. And again, for the record, that's People's Exhibit uh, 4 7. So, what did your mom ask you to do when you were at home? She asked me to go to the dollar store to get the items that she sent me because it was too clean, like the fire that happened downstairs the night before. And did anyone go with you to the dollar store? Lena did, yes. Whose idea was it for Lena to go with you? My mom's. Why is that, you know? No. And did she tell you exactly what you needed to buy at the dollar store? Yes. And do you remember what that was? Looking at the messages, yes. Okay, I'm gonna, if I can just have a second, Your Honor. Go ahead. You remember getting a receipt from the dollar store when you went there? I don't know. Okay, let me see if I can help you. Um, Oh, you may. And again, the people's exhibit 197 and 198. Okay. Okay. You recognize those items? Let's start with 197. Yes. What is people's exhibit 197? The items that I bought at the dollar store. And is that a photograph of a receipt from the dollar store? Yes. What about 198? Do you see that envelope? Yes. They're writing on that envelope? Um, at the top? Yeah. Is there like a label with some print on it? Yes. Does that relate to the dollar store receipt that we have a photograph of in 197? Yes. There's some scissors to your right on that table right there. Would you mind opening that envelope and just pulling out whatever in there and take a look at it to yourself if you don't want? Okay. I can just cut the top. You can cut it. You know, it's okay if I open it. That's fine. Thanks. And just for the record, I'll I'll cut it open for you, okay? okay. Cut it along the side here. Scissors back on that table, please. You can pull that item out of that envelope and take a look at it. Wait, hold on. She need gloves. No, it's a. Do you want gloves? I guess I should ask you, right? Um, I don't know. There's some there's some gloves. If you don't want to touch anything in there, you can put gloves on. Okay. Let me do it this way. How about I pull it out? Okay. <laughs> I'll show that to you. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? The receipt. Okay. Is that the same receipt that we have a photograph of in 197? Yes. The same general condition it was when you got it back on January 27th, 2020? Yes. It's, it's lawyer stuff. <laughs> Bear with me, okay? Uh, Your Honor, I move to admit people's exhibit 197 and 198 at this time. Hence, no. Exhibits 197 and 198 will be admitted. Request to publish People's Exhibit 197. You may, go ahead. As we're pulling that up, uh, we may have to mute the screen, Your Honor, so that we can pull up another exhibit, thanks. 
<clears throat> Did your mom tell you why you needed to buy these items at the dollar store? Yes. Why? To help with um, the fire that happened the night before. She said that she looked it. Okay, I'm sorry. That she looked up, like looked it up. So did she want to clean the area where the fire was? Is that what's going on? Yes. Is that what she told you? Yes. Is that there? Okay. We can probably unmute it now, Judge. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So behind you on the TV screen, we have 197. Um, can you just read off the items that you bought there at the dollar tree? Um, elastics. Sorry, it's kind of blurry. You could probably look at the one behind you. It might be a little clearer. Maybe we can zoom in a little. Is that better? Yes. Um, elastics, extra strength, EEO, I don't know what that stands for. Um, deodorizer, maybe? Yes. You remember buying the deodorizer at the Dollar Tree that day? Um, yes. Baking soda, baby oil, um, baby lotion, double bubble, trash bags, and cotton rounds. Well, we'll go in there as well, maybe? Yes. Lena? Yes, I remember I had got like lotion and stuff for myself there too, so yeah. And so uh, you and Lena go, do you remember about how long you were gone? Um, no. Uh, we can take that down if you like. What happens when you get home? Um, we get back, time had gone by. Um, there was like a specific time that my mom said that she asked Gannon to be home. And as time like approached, he never came home. So was there a plan for you guys to have dinner together or anything like that on the yes. 27th when you got home? Yes. Tell the jury about that. She said that she asked him to come home by like five or six and said that we were gonna go eat sushi. And then when time had gone by and he didn't get back, she was like, I guess he didn't wanna eat sushi. Um, and then after that, we started looking for him. Did she tell you when he had went to a friend's house? No. Was it unusual for Gannon to go to the friend's house and play and do things that normal 11 year old kids do? No. So at that point, what did you think? I mean, was it unusual for him not to come home when he was told to come home? Yes. What do you base that on? Because he's very specific with like time. Is your mother pretty strict when it comes to following the rules around the house? Yes. And that way with you your entire life? Yes. And she'd been that way with Lena and Gannon? Yes. You go over there, you're going to be home at a certain time or there's going to be consequences type thing? Yes. And so what was your mom's demeanor like? What, what was her expressions when she was telling you that Gannon was supposed to be home at six and he didn't come home? Um. She was worried. Remember, we got in the car and we drove to his friend's house. Lena walked up to the door to knock and see if he was there. They said no. Um, and after that, that's when she started to get worried. again yes as soon as she's ready judge i mean we can unmute it now judge if you don't mind thanks
So what I'd like to do is scroll down, if it's okay, uh, Mr. Gratiano, um, to January 27th. at 7.02 p.m. Be the next one there if you go, keep going. Are you there? Do you see a, a, that text message in the book that you have in front of you? Yes. Uh, it appears to be a screenshot of something. Do you remember what that screenshot was? A uh, uh, message just between her and Albert. Now at 7.02 p.m. on the 27th, were you out looking for Gannon? Is that when you and Lena were going to friend's house to see if he was there, that type of thing? Yes. You know why she's sending you this screenshot? Did she ever tell you why she was doing that? I can't remember what's on it. Okay. That's okay, Harley. We can move on. Why don't we scroll down, please? And then she sends you uh, any luck at 7.08 p.m. on the 27th. Do you know what she was referring to with regards to that? To finding Cannon. Did she go out with you to look for Gannon at all? We all went out together at first. And then I remember um, I took my car and drove down to his school to see if he was like at the park or something. <laughs> At that point in time, did you think he was out and about? And what was going on through your mind? Did you think he had run away or what? Yeah, I just thought that he had run away or he was just at his friends, didn't want to come home. But Why did you think that? That's just what I was told, so. Who was telling you that? My mom. Can you scroll down, please? And so you're responding to her. Uh, I couldn't remember the exact road that the park is on. Usually can just see with my eyes, but it is so dark. So I couldn't tell, but I'm at the school now. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. And you're at Gannon's school at this point in time? Yes. And Lena's with you? Or do you remember? I don't remember. And you say, if we scroll down, please look OMG and she responds okay anything do you know what's going on when this is being relayed to you no and then if we scroll down some more please you're asking your mom to ask Lena if she remembers any cars does that sound about right yes why are you asking her that at this point in time i'm pretty sure we were like knocking door to door um we had got told that he was with his friend jimmy or something and lana couldn't remember which house was jimmy's house so i was like do you does she remember like any cars or anything that was there did you see, because the next message is old station wagon. Did you see an old station wagon out there? Is that why you're asking your mom about that? Yes. So you're asking her to ask Lena if Lena remembers an old station wagon. Does that sound right? Yes, because she had been to this kid's house before. Okay, we can go ahead and scroll down. You're asking or old cars. Is that the same thing? I mean, are you seeing old vehicles out in the neighborhood or something like that? Yeah. You ask about colors and do you remember how your mom responded? Um, she said, no, don't go there by yourself. Can we scroll down, please. Keep going, please. And then she says, Connor's mom is on the way and she could go with you. Do you remember that? Yes. Is there any reason why, or did your mom tell you any reason why she wasn't going with you to help look for Danny? 
She said that she was going to stay home unless, like, he came home so somebody would be there. Can you scroll down, please? And she's asking again, anything yet? And keep scrolling, please, to... You say no, and then she says anything. And there's a time gap of a minute or 10 minutes, it looks like, between the anything. So is that, do you remember that happening as you're out searching? She texts you to see if you're finding anything? Yes. And we can scroll down to January 27th at 843. Further down, she tells you that she's still waiting. Do you know what that was about? Still waiting at the house. And so, was that telling you that Gannon hadn't come home yet? Yes. You respond no. Why did you respond no to that? Do you remember? Um, from her previous message. So. What does she mean by still waiting when you said no? It's kind of confusing to me. I had said no to her previous any anything message. Oh, okay. Got it. And then you say, look at the recent comment and we can scroll down. Remember saying that? Yes. And you ask her, do you need me to get you anything? Do you remember that? Yes. And we can scroll down. <laughs> She says, no, I may need to go to the store. Recall that? Yes. Do you know what store she needed to go to? No. And then below that at 6.21 a.m., which would be now the next morning, January 28th, there's a text message to you that says, don't answer the door for anyone. That's all. Yes, so... We had made a post in our neighborhood Facebook group, and she said that a bunch of people have her address, so people might show up, so don't answer the door. Okay. While you're out on the night of January 27, 2020, was there several people in the neighborhood looking for Dan at the same time? Not like people how it was like days after. Did the police eventually come to your house on January 27th, 2020? Yes. And do you know why the police came to your house? To file a police report. Do you know whether or not your mother had dialed 911 or called the police? I remember when we were in the car when it first happened, she was like, what do I do? Do I call Albert? Um, and... I remember she called Albert and I don't remember if she called 911 or I don't know. Okay. Regardless, the police show up. Do you remember about what time they showed up to your house? I remember they took a long time to get there, but I don't, I don't know what time. <laughs> Prior to the police getting there, do you remember your mom telling you to look at Gannon's backpack to see if there's... Yes. Did you do that? Yes. What did you see in Gannon's backpack during this time? When you opened the backpack, you had a folder in there, and in the folder was a Swisher Sweets. And what is a Swisher Sweets? Like a cigar roll thing. What did you think about when you saw a cigar in Gannon's backpack? Wasn't like him, and I was like, I don't know how a kid got this. Flash forward to when the police get there. Did your mom tell the police anything about a Swisher Sweet cigar being in his backpack? I don't know. 
you recall when the police were there that your mom bring you in to talk about this Swisher Sweet cigar? It's in the backpack? I don't know. You know that the police officers had body worn cameras on and audio in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. That happened, that would be on those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you think about the Swisher Sweet? being in the backpack and your mother having you go search his backpack? Um, for one, I didn't understand why it was in his backpack. And it's not like it was trying to be hidden because it was, as soon as you opened it, it was right there, so. So if it was Gannon Swisher Sweet cigar, uh, you wouldn't expect to find it. It would have been hidden in the backpack. Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. But it was out in the open. As soon as you opened the backpack, there it is. Yes, like in the folder, yes. You just have a moment, Your Honor. Me? Do you remember texting other people, friends in the neighborhood, people that you worked with that may have lived in the neighborhood? About Gannon being missing, can you look for him or let me know if you see him, that kind of stuff? Yes. Were you doing that pretty routinely at, during this time frame, the night of January 27, 2020? Yes. Did you get any response from any of them? Yes. What was their responses? Um, like praying for you. I'll keep my eye out. Let me know if you need anything. None of them saw Gannon, though? No. So January 28th at 2020, uh, she's telling you, don't answer the door for anyone. Do you remember when you got that particular text message? What do you mean? Uh, did you read it as soon as you got it, or did you read it when you woke up that morning? Whenever I woke up. Remember what time you woke up that morning? No. We can scroll down, please. <clears throat> she then sends you a text that says, I'm going to see if people are out looking at 6.21 a.m. on January 28th, 20. Now, if you see below that, it says red, January 28th, 2020, 7.25, 22? Yes. Is that when you would have read this text message? Yes. And if we scroll back up a little bit, it says the same thing for the prior one? Yes. Does that help you recall when you got up that day? Yes. So what did you think about that when you got this text message? Don't answer the door for anyone. I'm going to see if people are out looking. I thought that she was, she just woke up early to try to look for Cannon. Up until this point at 621 January 28th to the point where your mother says that Cannon went to his house, had you ever gone into the storage room of your house? No. You know where the storage room is? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. It's where the furnace is and where boxes are and things like that? Yes. Did you ever go in there? No. Are you a light sleeper or a heavy sleeper? Heavy sleeper. If your mom was in the basement at 6 a.m. on January 28th, would you have heard her down there? No. But you've heard her if there was objects being moved around within the basement? No. Did you see her at 7.25 a.m. on January 28th when you woke up? I don't remember. Why don't we scroll down and see if that helps us? So at 7.31 a.m., you send her, it looks like a screenshot. Do you remember what that screenshot was? Yes. Um, there was just people in our neighborhood Facebook group, like, saying things or posting, like, their ring footage. Um, so I would try to keep her updated. And is that if we scroll down uh, some other screenshots we see, is that what you're sending your mom is what people are posting? Yes. And then you say, if we can scroll down some more, please. Um, she's sending it C page. 
Do you remember that? Yes. What did you mean by that? Separate. Okay. Separate page. As mm. it says down below. Um, I think I just meant she is sending it separate. Now, what was your understanding as to what was going on with Albert? Was uh, Jan is missing, it's been overnight. We're now on January 28th in the morning. Do you know whether or not Albert was making arrangements to come home? Yes, he was. Do you know whether or not your mother was gonna pick him up at the airport or somewhere else? Um, She was gonna, I think she was gonna pick him up at the airport. Um, I don't know, things had like changed so much. Um, did she go to pick him up at the airport? Do you remember? I remember her leaving, yes. Did you talk to her before she left? No. We talked about your mother's vehicle, this black T1 earlier this morning. Where would she park this vehicle? In the garage. How would she park in the garage? Um. Would she pull in? With the front first, or would she back? Varies. The garage has got a lot of woodworking equipment in it and not a lot of room to park in there. Yes. Do you know how she parked in that garage the night of January 27th, 2020? I think she pulled in. Pull in, what is that? Like, uh, like didn't back end, she pulled straight in. So the front of the car is going in first? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so do you know how it was parked on the morning of January 28th, 2020, before she left to go get Albert in there? No. Did you see it that morning? I don't know. You don't remember or you don't know? I don't remember. But you knew your mom was going to go get him that morning. Yes. So as she's gone, does she text you with regards to your vehicle, the white jet? I don't remember. Okay, well, let's scroll down and see if that helps refresh. <clears throat> we can go down one more, please. So at January 28th at 8.44 a.m. She says, once shoes are at the front door. Do you take that to mean what shoes are at the front door? Yes. And did you respond? I mean, what was it? Did you know what that was about? Why is she asking you about shoes at the front door? Um, uh, There were ring videos that people were posting. So we were trying to think like, what shoes was he last wearing? Okay. And, and then did if you I took a picture, then she would know based upon what's at the door. Okay. And so we scroll down, are those pictures, is that, is that a picture of shoes at the front door? Yes. That you sent her? Yes. And then if we keep scrolling down, there's a screenshot? Yes. Is that this another screenshot from the neighborhood, uh, people posting things on the Facebook page and things like that? Yeah, and people, um, I think one of her friends were texting me and she saw this video as well and she sent it to me. And then if we can scroll down at 8.48 a.m., she asked you if you're working. Were you scheduled to work that day? I believe so. I remember calling off one of the days. Right. I don't remember which day. And then you respond no at uh, 8.48 a.m. Remember that? Yes. And then this next message, see this refreshes your memory. Does she, uh, we can scroll down. Does she ask you to pull your car in the garage? Yes. What was that about? Do you know why she's asking you to pull your car in the garage? No. Um, in the next message, she just said there was like a lot of people coming, so. Okay. Did you take that to think that no, she didn't want anybody to see your car out in the driveway perhaps? Um, that or like, so there was space in the driveway for people to park. Okay. But where was your car parked when you had to pull it into the garage? Do you remember? Um, I would normally park on like the side of the street or in the driveway sometimes. 
Did you pull your car into the garage when she asked you to do that? I think so, yes. And do you remember backing in or did you drive forward in? I don't remember. It's on video. Would the video reflect that? Yes. All right. And did you text your mom saying that your car is filled in and we can scroll down to January 28th at 8.54 a.m.? Yes. You see that? Yes. And then she responds, Albert said to tell Lena to work on her clothes. Did you know what that was about? Um, I think it was just like cleaning up her room. We can scroll down. We can keep going, please. And so your mom tells you uh, exactly what you just said. Clean the room before everyone gets there, right? Yes. What was your understanding of who was coming to the house? Um, I know Albert was coming home. There was different like army people that were coming. Um, I know some like family flew in, so. People were coming out to look for Gannon, right? Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember when your mom and Albert came back from the airport? Yes. Were they driving the black Tiguan? I don't remember what car they were driving. Do you remember your mom renting a car? Yes. Remember what color the car was? No. Remember what brand the car was? No. Did you think that was unusual that your mom left in the black Tiguan and came back in a rental car? I was told that they were going to be driving, searching for him. So she didn't want to put miles in her car. And Albert's truck, like, takes a lot of gas. Who told you that? My mom. So did you ask her about it, or did she just volunteer that to you? I don't remember. Were people from the media trying to contact you on January 28th in the morning hours? Um, I don't know if they contacted me. I did remember like news reporters coming. Do you remember call, telling your mother that the news reporters are particularly KKTV is contacting us? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you remember telling your mom that on the morning of January 28th? Yes, I think like she is my Facebook, so I think that's how they messaged me on Facebook. During this time frame, are you also having FaceTime conversations and phone conversations with your mom as well as text messaging? I don't know. I don't think so. If you were, would that be reflected in the cell phone records? Yes. You talked about um, soldiers or Albert's co-workers coming in to help look for Gannon. Yes. Did they actually come by in a silver SUV? Um, yes, I remember people from his unit came. And did you talk to them? Did you let them in the house? What happened with that? Um, yeah, I think I talked to them. Were you also texting other friends and people that you knew in the neighborhood about whether or not they'd seen Gannon during this time frame? Yes. Let's kind of jump to the afternoon of the 28th. Um, Do you know whether or not um, Albert and your mom were actually talking to detectives with the sheriff's office during this time frame? 
Um, yes, that's what I was told. They told you that? Um, I don't remember. I just remember it being mentioned. Do you remember a time in that afternoon where your mom kind of disappeared and you didn't know where she was at, that type of thing? Yes. Tell the jury about that. What was going on and what vehicle was she driving? Remember? I remember Albert was home and he kept calling her. And that's when the news reporter came in and filmed a video in her house. And something about they were asking her for like a hairbrush or toothbrush. That's why she couldn't answer or something. I don't know. If we can scroll down, I know uh, we're going to be jumping a lot, but down to 426 PM on January 28th. Are you there, uh, Ms. Hunt, in the notebook, or we can look at the screen if you're not? Yes. So at 4.26 p.m. on the 28th, you're texting her, where did you go? You remember that? Yes. How did she respond? We can scroll down. Do you see that where it says, I will text you in 10 minutes? Yes. Do you know where she was at when she's texting you at this time? No. Do you know if she's in the rental car or what vehicle she's in as she's gone during this time frame? I do not know. And then you respond with a, looks like a question mark. Or you said, huh, I'm sorry. Yes. What did you mean by that? Because I was confused when she said, I'll text you in 10 minutes. And then we, we scroll down and ask, where's Lena? Yes. Did you know where Lena was at? Yes, I said, never mind, she's here. Okay. Uh, and she responds, and we keep scrolling, she was on her, her bed at 4.29 p.m. Yes. And then we scroll down more. She says, don't open for anyone. Yes. What's going on here? Why is she telling you not to open the door for anyone? Do you know? Um, I do not know. I just feel like there was like a bunch of like stories or like reasons why it's never like clear why I couldn't open the door. At this point in time on January 28th at 4.30 p.m., had you heard of different versions of the events of what happened to Gannon at this point? Yes. What version of events did you hear? Let me ask you, did you hear this from your mother? Yes. What did she tell you happened again at this time? I had heard first that he was at a friend's house and then he was missing. And then that he, he must have been with his, his older, his friend's older brother. Um, and then that's when she kept saying to me, like, after all that, she was just like, they're trying to frame me and people are thinking it's me. Who is she referring to? Did she tell you when they say they are trying to frame me? Um, people in the groups, um, remember her mentioning like the detectives were being weird, asking weird questions to her. At this point in time, did you have ever say, mom, they just want to find Gannon. We're trying to find Gannon. Right. Did you ever say that to her? Yes. How did she respond to that? Um, I don't remember. Did you have problems with confronting your mom on some of this information? Yes. Like why you have a rental car, why, where's your car, that kind of thing? Yes. At this time period, are you just going along with what your mom's telling you? Yes. We can go ahead and scroll down some more, please. You say at 4.30, if we can go down one more, uh, where are you going? And she responds, 
I, I said I would text you in the next or next in 10 minutes. Yes. Would your mom usually tell you where she's at, what she's doing uh, under normal circumstances? Yes. Um, we had like 360, so I could always look on there too. Did you do that? It wasn't on. How do you know it wasn't on? Because it'll say like nothing found or it'll tell you. So while you're asking where you're going and things like that, you're looking at her Life 360 app to see where she's at? Yes. It was shut down for whatever reason? Yes. Had that ever happened? No. You always been able to find your mom and vice versa. She find you, I take it? Yes. Based on this Life 360 app? Yes. Okay, we can go ahead and scroll down some more, please. <clears throat> now you have the, the question mark symbol at 4.31 p.m. And she responds, something isn't right. I think they are hiding something. Yes. What was that all about? Do you know what she's talking about here? Um, she said that they were asking for like toothbrushes and like hairbrushes and stuff. So why would they need like, and like DNA? And you know that because lower in the text message, that's what she said, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And did you help Albert get the toothbrush and things like that for the police? Um, I don't remember. If we can go ahead and scroll down to January 28th at 4.33 p.m., You say, what do you think they're hiding? And did she respond to that text? No. And then you, if we scroll down, you have another question mark? Yes. And then at 4.50 p.m., you tell her, Albert said you need to go where he is at. Yes. Remember that? What yes. was that all about? Do you remember? I'm pretty sure they were both at like the police station. Um, do you know whether your mom was at the police station or not? Um, I don't know for sure, but she said that she was. Do you know that Albert was at the police station? Yes. When did she tell you she was at the police station? Um, I think when she got home. And this was again on January 28th, 2020? Yes. And if we scroll down, you say it's been 10 minutes. What is that in reference to? Because she said that she would text me in 10 minutes. And her response is, can we scroll down? Huh? Yes. Okay. H-U-H. And below that, if we scroll down, you say I-D-K. Is that for what? I don't know. EFT me and said you need to go there. FT is FaceTime. Okay. So did you have a conversation with Albert then at this time period? Yes. Was it clear to you that Albert was at the police station and your mom wasn't? Yes. Was it clear to you that they wanted your mom to go to the police station? Yes. And then if we scroll down, you do another question mark here at 5 PM. Do you remember that? Yes. At 5.04 PM, if we scroll down, your mother says, okay, I called them. Yes. And then she goes on to say, I'm talking to him to go. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you know whether or not your mom actually talked to him or ever went to the police station on January 28, 2020? I do not know. <clears throat> if we can scroll down to January 28th at 522.53. You see that where your mom says Albert? Yes. And you say to go where? What are you referring to there? Because in the previous message, she said I'm talking to him to go. 
And it was never clear what she meant. Okay. And then if we scroll down, your mother says, they said I have to go back to the place. Do you know what she's talking about there? No. Do you know where your mother's at at 524 p.m. on January 28th, 2020? No. And if we continue to scroll down, your mother says they are treating us crappy. Remember that? Yes. And you, if we go to the left, say, I'm not sure what that means. It says emphasized in quotes, they are treating us crappy. Is that something you're typing out or what did you do? No, it's like a, you can hold down the message and choose like a symbol. So it's like a thumbs up thing? Yeah. Or, yeah. There's only one I know. <laughs> So you respond to her message somehow emphasizing they are treating us crappy. Yes. Were you being treated crappy? No. Were you under the impression at this time that your mom was being treated unfairly by the police? Yes. Is that what your mom wanted you to think? Yes. We can scroll down to January 28th at 527. Your mom's asking you, who is there with you? Do you remember that? Yes. And at this time, it's just you and Lena in the house. Is that how you respond? Yes. And if we scroll down, <clears throat> keep going, please. To the, there we go. Back up. <laughs> I'm sorry. She says, who was at the ring? And then she says earlier, do you know what that message was about? Um, no. And I said, nobody was at the rink. Did your mom have access to your doorbell camera on her phone? Yes. So you say nobody's at the ring. And then if we could go down to January 28th at 528 PM. Your mom is now saying, what did Albert say to you? Yes. You know what that's in context? Um, I guess when he called me. Is it the FaceTime that we saw earlier that you talked about? Yes. And did you tell her what Albert had said to you? Yes. Can we scroll down, please? To tell you to come there, right? Yes. And then your mom responds, I told him this is nonsense to come there again. Yes. And now you're texting her uh, at, at 5.45 p.m. that someone is here with pizza. Do you remember that? Yes. Why are you texting her about that? Because she told me not to open the door. And then she responds, it's pizza. And you say, do I open? Yes. Why did you have to ask your mom for permission to open the door to get some pizza? Because she had told me originally to, and she would have watched the camera. I don't want to be in trouble. Would there be consequences for you if you didn't follow what your mom's telling you to do? Yes. Yeah, let me know when you, I, I can go right up to noon or so it's up to you. I was going to ask you to find a breaking point in the next five minutes or so. Why don't we scroll down to January 28th at 6.12 p.m. and 55 seconds. Right there. Your mom says, what's going on there? You remember that? Yes. And if we scroll down, you say Alberts came and left. Well, is back now. Yes. So what, what was going on with Albert? Was he coming and going from the house during this time frame? Yeah, just like the police station or wherever he needed to go. At this point, is your car still in the garage? You know? Um, yes. And is Albert driving his red Nissan truck? Yes. And your mom, you don't know if she's driving a rental or what vehicle she's driving? Correct. And you don't know where your mom's at still? Correct. Did you ever ask her, why don't you just tell me where you're at, Mom? I'm worried about you. 
No. Um, from her messages, I just assumed that she was at the police station. And then if we scroll down, she asks you again. Uh, uh, we can scroll down one more. She says, what's Albert? And then she uh, says, doing in the correction down below. Do you remember that? Yes. And then she tells you at 6.24 p.m. on January 28th, they are asking me dumb questions. You remember that? Yes. Now, do you know where she's at when she sends this? Um, I thought she was at the police station. And did you think she's there based on what she's telling you here? Yes. And then you respond talking to the news because they're here. Is that when the the film crew showed up that you talked about earlier? Yes. And were they in the front yard or where were they? No, they came in the house. How'd they get in the house? Um, I think Albert let them in. Oh, so Albert was there at this point. Yes. Okay. And was he being interviewed by them or do you remember? Yes. Then at 6.31 p.m., your mom asked, is he still with the news? Do you remember that? Yes. You say they're about to leave. Is that right? Yes. Does anybody else know in the house that you're talking to your mom via text while all this is going on? I think so, yeah. Did Albert know you were in communication with your mom? I think, I don't know. I mean, is that why he's asking you to tell your mom to come down to the police station, that kind of thing? Yes. You know, this is a good time probably to stop for the lunch if you like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our noon recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury or back uh, in the jury room a little bit before 1.30, we should be able to start right on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case. With Thank you. May I'll be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury can has returned to the court. When we took our break, we were in the midst of the examination of uh, Ms. Hunt. That's where we will resume. Uh, Ms. Young. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Hunt. Good afternoon. I kind of want to jump forward a little bit on January 28th, 2020. Uh, but before I do that, I think we left off somewhere around 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, up until that point, had you known where your mother was at? No. <clears throat> and I'm going to fast forward to now 7.21 p.m., uh, where you're texting uh, your mother, uh, someone is here. Do you remember that? Yes. What was going on at the house, and why did you say someone is here? There were detectives at our front door. And did you see them out front, or how did you know they were there? Yeah, I saw them out front. And again, I want to scroll down. Your mom says who, and then you go on. What do you say after that? I don't know, people with badges. I imagine that's how you knew they were detectives, right? Correct. Uh, and did you know the sheriff's office was investigating this, the disappearance of Gannon? Yes. And so she responds, don't poke. And I think she corrects it. And we scroll down and says, you say, okay. And then she says, open. How did you take that? Um, don't open. Did you open the door for the police? No. And I don't want to go through the whole text here, but did they ring the doorbell or knock on the door? Um, they knocked on the door. And did they announce who they were? Um, I don't know. Let's scroll down and see what you say. So now they're knocking. They're leaving, I think. Again, we can just keep scrolling down. She says, WTH, who is that? And how do you respond? I responded saying, I don't know. We can scroll down some more, please. Then you say their car is still here. And then what happens after that? Someone called me, called my phone, um, no caller ID, and left a voicemail. So why are you doing a play-by-play -play of everything that's happening to your mom? Because... Previously, she had told me not to answer the door, so I was just kind of updating her with what happened. 
And if we can scroll down a little bit further, do you get a voicemail from this call? Yes. It says there, I didn't answer. So I take it you didn't answer? Correct. And you say it was a defective. Did you mean to say something else? I meant to say detective. <laughs> you must text like me with your thumbs, maybe? Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, we can keep scrolling down. So they left the voicemail. Do you remember what the voicemail was? Um, I just remember them saying like, hey, Harley, it's a detective. We want to talk to you. Okay. And did you forward that voicemail on to your mother? I did, yes. If we can scroll down so we can see that. Keep going down, please. All right. So we stop it here at January 28th at 7.32 p.m. Is that the voicemail that was left on your phone that you sent to your mother? Yes. All right. And we can scroll down to the next one. She says, what, why do they want to bombard you? You know what she meant by that or what that is referenced to? Um, yeah, I guess like, why are they showing up trying to ask questions? Okay. We can continue to scroll down, please. What do you say in response to that? I said, I don't know, how did they get my number? How long were they out there? Do you remember? The police? Um, they were out there for a little while. It wasn't like a quick, like, here and go. Okay. And so at 7.37 p.m., uh, do you remember calling your mother and having a conversation with her? Yes. And do you remember how, about how long that conversation was? No. Uh, if the records indicate it was 10 minutes and 15 seconds, would that be about accurate? Yes. What did you guys talk about? Do you remember? Um, I remember she just said, like, don't open the door. Like, you're a minor. They can't talk to you because you're a minor. And did you follow what your mom was saying? Yes. Uh, did you keep an eye on them? Were you looking out the windows to see if they were still out there during this time period? Yes. <laughs> and did you have, uh, did you actually try to call your mom back uh, on a couple of occasions during this time period? <clears throat> Probably, yeah. Did she answer? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember actually having a FaceTime conversation with her at 9.55 p.m. on January 28th? No. Um, does that sound like something you might do if the police are outside and you're wanting to figure out what to do? Yes. Okay. And so what did you eventually do about 10 o'clock p.m. that night. Yeah, so, um, sorry, now that I'm reading the messages, it's refreshing me, but she had called me um, and told me to leave the house. Um, she tried to get me to leave Lena there, and I told her I didn't want to, and I feel comfortable doing that, so she told me to bring Lena to um, one of her friend's house, and that if I left and the detectives were there, to not tell them where I was going. So I take it it was just you and Lena in the house when the police were outside? Correct, yes. And the police get there at 7.21 p.m., is that right, based on the text messaging? Yes. And at 10 o'clock, are they still there when you try to leave with Lena? Yes. Tell the jury about that. What happens? So I opened the garage, and they just came out from the side, right from the garage. And they were like, hey, Harley, like, where are you going? And um, my mom told me to say I was going to like Starbucks or something. Um, so just listen to what she said and told them that. Uh, did you cooperate with them? Um, yes, they asked me questions and I answered it. And then um, I feel like they kept asking me more questions and I was just like, I don't, I don't wanna talk. And why didn't you wanna talk? Because at this point, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Everything's just so, like, up and down. It's, I'm just so confused. If we can fast forward to 10.03 p.m. in the text string. I just maybe go up a little bit. All right, that's good. So... Are you there in your book or do you need to look at the TV to see where we're at? Yes, I'm here. 
So January 28th at 10 on two 50, I think it's six seconds, maybe. Um, you say, as soon as I opened the garage, they stopped E. Is that what you're talking about? That they were out there when you opened the garage door? Yes. And so does that help kind of refresh? They were out there from 721 until 10 p.m. at night? Yes. When you were leaving with Lena, did you know the police were outside? No. Did you think they had already left? Yes. If we can scroll down now, please. You say they were hiding out, remember that? Yes. Okay, we can keep scrolling down. And your mom says, wow, remember that? Yes. And then you go on and say, yeah, and then we can scroll down, please. Why did you say, but I think I'm allowed to leave? Um, I just didn't want to do anything wrong. So I didn't know if we were allowed to leave the house or not, so. And if we can, your mom says, why wouldn't you be allowed to leave? Do you remember that? Yes. We can scroll down, please. You say IDK, I don't know, right? Yes. Your mom says, I want my dogs and you. Remember that? Yes. You know what she was talking about there? Just that she wanted, like, the dogs and me. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. All right. And just have a second. We're going to scroll down. <clears throat> Do you remember telling your mom during this text spring, string, excuse me, that uh, I told them I'm not going anywhere or saying anything? Yes. And why did you tell your mom that? Because that's what she told me to say. Okay. You can go down just a little bit. Keep going. Keep going, please. You can find them where I just read from the. Yeah, I'll find it here. <coughs> okay, there it is. So at January 28th at 10.04 p.m., this is you telling your mom, I told them I'm not going anywhere or saying anything. And you said no. Saying that? Yes. Do you remember how your mom responded when you scroll down? She said, just keep saying that. And what did she say after that? Tell me what that guy says. Do you know who she was referring to when she said that? Um, the guy at the door. Okay. If we can scroll down, please. Uh, one more, please. Now at 10.05 p.m., your mom asked you, has any other family asked where I was? As like our family. That? Yes. Give you any context on any of the phone calls earlier about what this is about? No, I just assumed she meant like if she was okay. And she'd been missing essentially since about what, 3.45 that afternoon? Yes. Okay, we can scroll down, please. We can keep going down to... Go on. As we're scrolling through this, was the were you still giving her a play-by-play -play as to what the police were doing in the house and things like that? Yes. At uh, January 28th at 10.07 p.m., do you remember your mom saying, I have to get an attorney fast? Yes. And do you know what that was based on? She kept saying that they're setting her up. 
Was that a continuing theme? Yes. Really, all the way till you go back to Myrtle Beach? Yes. And you recall telling your mom that they're just taking pictures during this text spring string? Yes. And how did your mom respond to that? Do you see that? She asked of what? Were they taking pictures? Yes, of the house. And did you tell your mom what they were taking pictures of? Yes. Okay. If we can scroll down to 1011, please. We can go down one more. All right, right there. Uh, well, let's go back up. I'm sorry. My computer is out. So. Oh, this is where she says, what are they taking pictures of? You say the entire house. Yes. Do you recall that? Yes. And then if we scroll down, um, you don't hear from her until 10, 11 again, where she says, what's Landon been doing? Yes. Had you seen Landon up until this point? No, I put she's not here. And then she asked you who's there at 10 11 um, that night. Do you remember that? Yes. And how did you respond to that? I said just me. Now, was Lena still in the house at this point? No. What happened to Lena? Um, the detective struck her. You know where she went? Um, to Albert. We can scroll down, please. She says she's been set up at 10, 11, and 31 seconds. You remember that? Yes. And then she says, just so just you and, is that supposed to be Albert? Yes. How did you respond to that? I said, no, it's just me. Okay. Did she ever tell you what to say to the police officers when they were there? Do you remember? Yes. What did she tell you? She just kept saying, like, don't say anything, like you're a minor and they shouldn't be asking you questions. Uh, did she ever ask you to call 911 if you need to? I don't remember. Okay. We can scroll down a little bit, please. You see that in there yet? Yes. Miss Hunt? Mm -hmm. What exactly is said there and what time is it? Um, she kept asking why are there detectives there with you, an underage minor. I was at 10, 12, and I said, I don't know, but I'm asking if I can leave. And she said, Tell them you're uncomfortable with these men at Thank 10 13. You. Can we go ahead and scroll down to 10 13? And did you Ever tell them that? I just said, I don't feel comfortable asking, like answering questions. Did they stop asking you questions? Yes. And was there a female officer there? Yes. Do you remember having conversations with her not related to this in the kitchen? Yes. That kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we can scroll down, please. Now at 10, 13, 56, your mother says, if you need, if not, you need to call 911 and tell them they are making you stay there. Remember that? Yes. Did you ever call 911? No. Why didn't you call 911? Because it didn't seem needed. Cops are already there, right? Right. I want to fast forward to, um, 10 23 p.m. Do you remember having a FaceTime conversation with your mom? Yes. We can we can blink that out if you like. Thanks. And how long was that conversation? 
I don't know how long it was, but I know generally what was said. What was said? She told me to go meet her at one of the hotels and to just like be careful leaving. What was that all about? You know, what, why did she tell you to meet her at one of the hotels? Um, we were going to stay there that night. Is this the first time the entire day where she told you where she's going to be? Yes. And so what did you do after having this FaceTime conversation with your mom? I listened to what she said, and then I went to where she was. And did you go by yourself? Yes. Did you take the Jetta? Yes. Um, while you're driving to go wherever you're going, did you attempt to call her a few times? Yes. And did she answer? No. Where was this hotel you were going to, and how close was it to where you work? It was right next to where I worked at. So close to the Massage Envy? Yes. Off of Powers? Yes. Did she say why you're staying in a hotel room that night? She said that she didn't want to be in the house with Albert and Landon and his family. Why did she need you to leave the house? Did she tell you? She didn't want me there with them. Okay. And so did you pack a bag? I assume so. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about it. Why were you trying to call your mom on the way to go to this hotel? Because I wanted to make sure that she was there. It's because we hadn't spoken really after that. And then um, I remember I got there and I was waiting for a while because I didn't know where she was. And when you say there, where are you talking about? Um, the hotel. What, do you remember what hotel it was? It's probably like a Marriott or Hilton or IHG or something. Several hotels in that area? Yeah. Did you eventually see your mom at this hotel? Yes. Do you remember about how long it took her to get there and what time it was, that kind of thing? It was, it was quite a while. Um, I remember waiting for a long time. Um, was it in the morning hours in the 29th or was it still the 28th? I don't know. It was late, though. It seemed like you were sitting in your car a long time in a parking lot waiting for her? Yes. Okay. Oh, what vehicle was she driving when she eventually showed up? Her um, Volkswagen. The Tiguan? Yes. When's the last time you saw that Tiguan? It was that night. How about prior to that night? When, when did, did you see it on the 28th at all? Um... I saw it prior. I don't know the exact date, though. Do you know what happened to the rental car? No. So you just go to this hotel. Your mom shows up in the Tiguan. When she left that day, was she in the rental car? Do you know? I don't know. Um, I just know that when I met her at the hotel, she was in her Tiguan. But what happens when she eventually shows up at the hotel in her Tiguan? So she shows up and she's like... um. We just need to go home. She leaves her car there, and then we drive back to the house in my car. Did she tell you why she's leaving her car at the hotel? No, she was just like, we can ride together. Did you ever get out of your car to go to her car and look and see if there's anything in it, that kind of thing? No. Did you ever get close enough to her car to smell anything? No. Did you ever ask her, what are you doing, mom? Why are you leaving your car here if we're gonna go home? No, she just kept saying like, she was just kept being like paranoid, I guess you can say. Did she tell you why she was being paranoid? Um, there was a couple of different stories, yeah. Um, I was told that they brought Albert and her in different rooms and tried to say like, the other person did this to see how they would react. And that's why she felt like she was being set up. Do you even know if she ever went to the police station to be interviewed no. at this point? You know, the next day is when she went to the police station to be interviewed. If you don't know it, that's fine. I'm just I don't know. <laughs> at least she's telling you that her and I are at the police station. They separate us and they're trying to play each other against us. Is that what she's saying? Yes.
Did you guys go straight home from there? Yes. If the phone records indicate um, that you were still face trying to FaceTime with your mom at 11.26 and 11.31 p.m. on the 28th, would that mean that you hadn't seen your mom yet? Yes. And so what happens when you get home? Um, I remember going home. I stay in my bedroom. Yeah. Who was there when you got home? Do you know? Um, pretty sure Albert and his family and everybody was there. Was Landon there? Yes, I think. I'm not sure. And if you looked at your text messages, uh, People's Exhibit 705 that's in front of you, uh, do you see a string of text messages uh, on January 29th, 2000 from 1.36 one, uh, a.m. to about 1.40 a.m. in there? Yes. Uh, is your mom in the house when these text messages are going on? Yes. She upstairs and you're downstairs or what's what's going on? Yeah, she's upstairs and downstairs. And what is she asking you about? Um, I guess they had the uh, police had like gone through her clothes and everything and there was stuff everywhere. And asking me if my room was the same way. Do you see in People's Exhibit 705 whether or not she asked you what the downstairs looks like? Yes. Am I saying 705? I meant to say 205. It's 705. I apologize, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 205. Does this text messaging back and forth go on for uh, an hour or so that morning? Yes, while we're at home. Does it end roughly around 2 in the morning? Yes. So I'm assuming you eventually went to sleep, right? Yes. Uh, do you remember about what time you got up? Mm. Around eight. Okay. Did you have to work that day? Yes, I did. What time did you have to be at work? Mm -hmm. 8.30. So January 29th, 2020, uh, you have to go to work. Did you take anyone with you when you left to go to work from the house? Yes, I took my mom with me. And why did you take your mom with you? Because she said that she was going to pick up her car since it was right by where I worked. Okay. Did you ever ask again, why did we leave it there anyway? No. Did you make any stops on the way to go pick up the Tiguan? No. You didn't go to the airport that day? Oh, yes, we did. Sorry. Okay, tell us about that. What happened? Why did you go to the airport? What, what happened? I remember we were driving there and she told me, don't speed. I think someone's following us. And she had to turn in the, kit, um, the keys for the rental car. Did she tell you where the rental car was at? No, I think it was at the airport. So did she tell you why she kept the keys that the rental car was already at the airport? No. So can you describe to the jury what you remember seeing your mom do and how she returned these keys? I don't remember. I just remember being in the car when she returned them. Did she go inside the airport? I don't remember if she went in or left the keys in the car. Well, did you see the rental car when you went to the airport? If she left the keys in them, then yes. Okay. Well, how long were you there? Was this something that happened very quickly or did it take some time? Yes, it was quick. 
You didn't see her talk to anyone from Avis, or did you? No. Um, so what happens after she gets done with the keys? Um, we drive to my work. Does she get back in your car then? Yes. Did you park your car anywhere, or are you still just kind of in the drive through at the airport of theirs? Yeah, I was just sitting there waiting. And so what'd you talk about as you're going to take her to your car or her car, excuse me? Um, she just told me not to speed because somebody was following us. And when we got to my work, she sat in my car for a little while and I went inside to work. How close was it to the hotel where the Tiguan was at, your, your work? It was close, across the street. Did she tell you what her game plan was? I mean, as she sat in your car? No, um, she just said that she needed a minute and she sat in the car and then she came inside to give me my keys and left. Did you see her looking around the parking lot or looking to see anything? No. Earlier you alluded to that she kept telling you not to speed. Did you say that she thought she was being followed or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did she tell you who she thought was following her? The police. Do you know where she was going after she got the T1? No. What time were you supposed to get off of work that day? Do you remember? I was supposed to get off later than I did, I'm pretty sure. Did something cause you to leave work early? Yes, she, I got a call that she was at the hospital. Do you remember who called you? I think one of her sisters. So what did you do when you got a call from one of her sisters saying that your mom was at the hospital? I asked if I could leave to go pick her up. And did you do that? Yes. Did you pick anyone else up or ask anyone to go with you to pick up your mom? Yes, eventually I did. And who was that? Do you remember? Janine. Uh, is that Janine Sanchez? Yes. And is that someone you worked with? Yes. Uh, is that someone who was a friend of yours back then? Yes. Okay. Why'd you ask her to go with you? I remember I tried to go there at first and they wouldn't let me go in because I was a minor. And then I remember just before that day, she was like, if you need me or anything, I'll come with you for anything that you need, so. So where did you try to go first and they wouldn't let you in because you're a minor? Right. Where, where was that? The hospital. Oh, so you, do you remember what hospital it was? No. Was it one close to downtown here? Yes. Memorial Hospital sound familiar? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you went to the hospital, then did you have to go somewhere to pick Janine up? Yes. Where did you go to pick her up? I believe I picked her up at her house. Okay. Did you go back to the hospital after you picked up Janine? Yes. And what happened when you got back to the hospital? Um, we picked her up from a Taco Bell. How did that happen? How, how did you get from the hospital to Taco Bell? I got a call. Um, she said she was writing with some random person and to pick her up at the Taco Bell by the hospital. Who called you and who said that? My mom. And so uh, did you ask her why? Why we're going to a Taco Bell? I thought you were at the hospital type thing. Right. Um, pretty sure I was told like they didn't want her to leave at first, so. And how did you respond to her when she said, I got a ride with some stranger to the Taco Bell? It was weird. I was like, be careful. Okay. So did you and Janine then go to this Taco Bell? Yes. And was the Taco Bell here in the downtown area? Yes. Are you familiar with Platt and Wasatch? I know Platt. Okay. <laughs> was the Taco Bell close to Platt? Yeah. Close to downtown? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what happens when you get to the Taco Bell? Um, I'm driving, Janine is in the passenger seat, and my mom's in the back seat. Does your mom say anything to you as to what's going on and why you picked her up at the Taco Bell versus the hospital? Yeah, she was just rambling a bunch of things. 
you remember what those things were? No, it's just, I remember being like, just a lot, just a bunch of random stuff. Uh, did she have her phone with her? No. Uh, did she ask to use anyone's phone? Yes. Who, whose phone did she ask to use? She had my phone. Uh, and how long did she have your phone after that point? At least until we got home. Did she tell you that the police had taken her phone? Yes. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. I'm going to hand you people to visit at 206. Have you had a chance to look at that last night? Yes. Do you know what people's exhibit 206 is? Yes. What is it? Yes, it's uh, messages between my phone and Albert's phone. And does it cover this time frame that we're talking about here um, after you pick up your mom from the Taco Bell? Yes. In particular, January 27th, 2020 at 7.16 p.m. to January 30th, 30th 2020 at 10.41 a.m. Is that when it starts and ends? Yes. And do you recognize those messages? Some of them. Do you recognize the ones up until the point you picked up your mom at the Taco Bell? Yes. And do you see the ones that were used after you picked up your mom from the Taco Bell that went to Al Albert, Al Stout? Yes. Uh, are those messages that your mom used while she had your phone? Yes. Is that the foundation? Overruled. And do they actually reflect your messages and what your mom was doing when she had your phone uh, on those dates? Yes. Move to admit People's Exhibit 206. Mr. Tolini? Object on foundation. I think sufficient foundation has been laid. She's stated that she's familiar with her phone number. She's familiar with who she gave the phone to. I think it goes to weight, not admissibility. The objections overruled. In addition, Your Honor, this exhibit was shown to Albert Stauk and he authenticated his uh, messages on there. He did. Thank yes. you. Yes. Go ahead. So, where did you go after you left the Taco Bell with your mother and Janine Sanchez? To Janine's house. Did you make any stops or did you go anywhere before you went to Janine's house? I remember getting the dogs at some point. Do you ever remember going to a parking garage? Yes. What was that all about and who told you to go to a parking garage? My mom told me and she was looking to see if her car was still there. Uh, do you know where this parking garage was at? Somewhere downtown. And describe to the jury what you did as you went to this parking garage. We just drove around um, and she was just seeing her her car was still there and we left. What did she tell you happened to her car and why was she looking if she told you that? Um, I think she was worried that the police took her car. When you picked her up at Taco Bell, did you ask her where her car was? I think she had mentioned it to me that it was there. Okay. At the parking garage? Yes. Was, your, was it your understanding what this parking garage was associated with? Just, I thought it was associated with the hospital. Okay. Uh, was it close to the hospital though? I don't remember. Okay. Did you find the car in the sparking garage? I think so. I don't remember. Uh, did you see some deputy sheriffs in the parking garage around the car when you drove by it? <laughs> remember. Okay. All right. So then you said you go uh, to Janine's house. Why did you go to Janine's house? Um, I was just told that we couldn't stay at our house. And what was, were you, were you planning on staying there prior to picking up your mom? Yes, um, I remember her telling me like, cause I remember talking to her in conversation saying like, I don't know if we can stay at our house. Um, and she was like, well, if you ever need to stay with me, then you can. And so prior to picking up your mom, you already made arrangements. I'm going to stay at Janine Sanchez's house tonight. Yes. How about your mom? Was a plan for her to stay there as well? Um, I don't remember. 
Well, did she stay there? Yes. Um, do you remember her text messaging Janine while you're in the car? Yes. How do you know that? From these messages. And so that's not you texting Janine. What does the text message say? These aren't between me and Janine. Well, do you remember your mom texting Janine, is it okay if I stay here or words to that effect? Yes. And did she eventually stay at Janine Sanchez's house with you? Yes. Right. Uh, were you there the entire night once you got there after the Taco Bell? Yes. I'm gonna flash uh, forward to January 30th of 2000. Um, do you remember, well, I'll ask you, did you text Massage MD saying you're gonna resign? Yes, I remember um, my mom wrote the email for me. Was it an email or a text? Do you remember? A text message. And if the records indicate that was at 4.30 a.m., would that sound accurate? Yes, I don't remember being up that late, but. Did you text that or did your mom text that? Do you know? I don't remember. Okay. So what happens when you get up? What, what do you do the next day on that January 30th? Mm, I remember getting up, we took the dogs out and I think that's the day that we drove to like Marshall's. Now, as you're driving to Marshall's, uh, was who was in the car? Me and my mom. Did your mom ever say anything about the police following you at that point? Uh, did she say anything about go the speed limit, don't break the law, that kind of thing? No. Did you know that the police were following you? Eventually. We're going to talk about what happens at the marshals. But okay. Up until the point that happens, did you know that they were following you on the road? In other words, any discussion, hey, there's a car behind us, and that car's been behind us for a while. No. Was your mom ever looking around to see if anyone was following? No. Nothing unusual about that trip then? No. So tell us what happens when you get to the marshals. Um, we get to the marshals, go inside to get like clothes or whatever we were looking for. And then I'm at the cash register and that's when like the police come in. Okay. What did the police do when they came in? They took my phone and as we were walking out, they put me in handcuffs. How did that make you feel? Bad. Was your mom in the store with you when this happened? No. Did your what? What was your mom doing when all this was happening? Do you remember? She walked outside. Did she go out before or after you? Before. And did you see her when you came out? Yes. What was going on with her? She was also with the police. Was she in handcuffs as well? Yes. Did she say anything to you that you remember? Yes. What did she say? To not say anything. And how did she say that? She was yelling it. Pretty hysterical at that point? Yes. Was she screaming other things? Yeah, I remember her saying other stuff. Um, she was just like, that's my daughter. Don't do anything, stuff like that. How long did all this take place? 20, 25 minutes. I seemed seem like a long time. For yeah. Um, did they eventually take the handcuffs off and let you go? Yes. Uh, same thing with your mother? Yes. Did they take your car and your phone? Yes. Would you recognize your phone if you saw it again? Yes. <laughs> Probably wondering what I got in my hand here, huh? Uh, if I may approach you on her, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to hand you what's marked as. People exhibit 203, okay? Yeah. In 203, it's pretty obvious that there's a cell phone in plastic there. Do you recognize that cell phone? Yes. <laughs> you just take it out and look at it. And, you... and whose cell phone is that? This is mine. And is it in the same general condition as was when the police took it from you on January 30th, 2020 at the Marshalls? Yes. 
Move to admit People's Exhibit 203. Mr. Jackson, Exhibit 203 will be admitted. So what was the game plan after they took your car and your phone? What were you and your mom going to do? Yeah, we were supposed to meet my family. Um, and at that point, we didn't have a phone to contact them to let them know where we were. So we walked down to a store that was in that plaza to use the phone to call them. Now, prior to all this happening at Marshall's, did you know that you had family members flying in? Yes. And did you know what family members were coming? Yes. And what family members were coming? It was my grandma, my uncle, and my aunt. And what are their names? Deborah, Dakota, and Brenda. Is it Deborah Lockler? Yes. And who's Deborah Lockler? My grandma. And Dakota Lowry? Yes. Who's Dakota Lowry? My uncle. And Brenda, is it pronounced awkward? Acquired. What is it? Acquired. Okay, acquired. I'm yep. sorry. And who is Brenda acquired? My aunt. Okay. And so did they eventually come and pick you up there? Yes. Uh, where did you go after you were picked up at the Marshalls? We went to the hotel we were staying in. And do you remember the name of that hotel? It was an extended stay. Was it extended stay America? Yes. And you probably don't know the address, but was it up north area? Yes. Uh, does 5855 Corporate Drive ring a bell at all? No, I didn't know the address. Okay. Um, so what did you do when you got to the extended stay? We got there. We were talking with my family. And then after then, we went to Walmart. And why did you go to Walmart? They were just saying, like, you guys need to get some clothes because... We didn't have any at that point. I'm assuming you got some clothes at Walmart? Yes. Uh, then you did, where'd you go from there? Back to the hotel. You guys remember where you ate that night? No. So once you get back to the hotel, uh, do you remember how many rooms you had? Two. Who was staying in which room? Um, It was back and forth, so... I'm pretty sure my grandma and my aunt stayed in one room, and then it was me, my mom, and my uncle. So you and your mom and Dakota? Yes. Um, did you guys talk about what you were going to do the next day or what the plan was? Um, your family's out here. You got two hotel rooms. What was the going plan for the next day? Do you know? Yeah, so they were just there, um, like, supporting us, of course, because of everything that happened, and... The next day, we were supposed to go and get our belongings from the house. And how are you going to go about getting that? They rented a van. And who is they? Um, my aunt. What kind of car did they have, or did they have a car, I'm assuming, when they picked you up at the Marshalls the day before? Yes, it was a sedan. Do you remember what kind of make and model it was? Um, Nissan. Sorry? Uh, Nissan. Ultima? Does that sound familiar? Yes. And so did you go the next morning to get a van? Um, yes, we all went to get the van. And who rented this van? My aunt. Would that be Brenda? Brenda, yes. Okay. Uh, and so where did you go after you rented the van or after Brenda rented the van? Um, after we got the van, that's when we went to the house. Did you take the Nissan Altima as well? Yes. Do you remember who was driving which vehicle? No. Do you remember what vehicle you were in? I'm pretty sure I was in the car. Okay. Do you remember who was driving the car that you were in? I, no, I don't know. It's okay. If you don't remember, that's fine. So what happens when you get to 6627 Mandon Drive? There are police there. Um, and we went in to go get our stuff. Um, Albert's family was there. He was there just like everyone was there. Um, and as we got our stuff, the police had to look through everything that we brought. What kind of stuff were you getting? Um, mainly just like clothes. Did you go to your room to get your clothes or did, uh, what items did you get out? Do you remember? Yes, I went to my room to get my clothes. Were there suitcases? 
Um, yeah, we were filling like um, Tupperware bins or suitcases or like bags or kind of anything. Oh, do you remember seeing a big, large olive green suitcase that had wheels? And did you remember seeing that when you're moving things out of the house that day? No. Do you know what suitcase I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, and who did that suitcase belong to? Do you remember? Albert. And is it a suitcase that you saw in the past when you're moving from Alaska and things like that? Yes. Okay. Were the police checking every suitcase that came out of that house? Yes, they were checking anything we took out. Um, if it was any books, they had to go through the pages. We couldn't really take any technology. And so how much, how long did this take to get things out of the house and put in the van? They were trying to do it quick, um, maybe like an hour. What happens when you get your things and the van is loaded up? Where do you go from there? We were supposed to drive back to the hotel, um, but as we're leaving, um, my mom saw a reporter and wanted to talk to them. Whose idea was it to talk to the reporter? Do you remember? My mom's. Did anyone try to talk her out of it? Um, yes. Who? I just remember my family saying, like, that's probably not a good idea. Was your mom pretty determined to talk to this reporter? Um, she had got out the car, so I don't remember what she had said to them, but I remember like we had left the area where we were at and went down like a back street at the back of the neighborhood to talk to them. So you went somewhere else so that your mom could do this interview with the reporter? Yes. Uh, you still had the Nissan and you still had the rental van? Yes. So talk about that interview. What were you doing when your mom was being interviewed by, was it KKTV? Yes. What were you doing? I was just waiting in the car. Was there a point in time in the interview where your mom asked you to come out? Yes. Uh, and did you do that? Yes. Uh, did you get on camera and answer questions? Yes. Why did you answer the questions the way you did on KKTV? Because that's how she told me to. Were you doing what your mom told you to do during that time period? Yes. And do you recall what those questions were? Um, I know they asked me my name. I don't remember what they asked me after that. Do you remember talking about the hike at Garden of the Gods and whether or not you saw Ganon after this hike and things like that? Yes. And is that what you're talking about? You're just going along with what your mom wanted you to say? Yeah, when she came to the car, she was like, come on, let's go do this interview. I didn't want to do the interview. Um, and I was like, I don't know what I'm like supposed to say because I was told that we weren't allowed to talk about the fire. So I was like, am I allowed to talk about the fire? So, yeah. And you said you saw him, right, after the hike? Yes. And you did see him, as you testified earlier. That's when he was in the bedroom and you got home from work late at night and you didn't know if he was asleep or awake, but yes. you saw him in bed. Yes. Okay. What did you do after this um, interview? Um, We left and went to the hotel. Both cars? Yes. In, in car? Yes. What happens when you get back to the hotel? Um, We get back. Remember my mom saying that she needed to leave because she needed to get dog food. And did she leave? Yes. Do you recall what car she took? The rental car. The Nissan Altima? Yes. And how long was she gone? She was gone a while. Two and a half hours? Yeah, I was a... Overruled. Did it seem like it was that long, two and a half hours? It was a long time, yes. Did she tell you where she was going to this pet store, where, what location it was, and things like that? No. Um, I remember when she came back, I was like, what took so long? And she was like, I didn't use the GPS, um, so I got lost. What was the game plan for the next day when she comes back? Did you know what was going to happen the next day, February 1st? Um, I, that's the day that we left. Okay. 
And so just January 31st is when you go and get the items out of the house, the KKTV interview, you go back to the hotel. She's gone for quite a while, comes back the next morning. What was the game plan? Next morning, um, I remember that we were going to leave and my aunt said that she didn't want to pay for the van while we were gone and, and just like insurance purposes. So we had to go and get a new one. And when you say we, who are you talking about? Um, like they just had to go get a new one. I don't. Do you recall who went and got a new van? Um, I don't remember if I went with them or not. Uh, did eventually your mom show up in a different van, and at the hotel? Yes. And would that be in the morning of February first, twenty twenty? Yes. Did you have any idea what was going to happen when she came back with the van, a new van, and on February 1st, 2020? Um, I just knew that we were leaving. I didn't know where we were going. Did you ask your mom where we're going? Yeah, the destination changed multiple times. Tell us about that. Um, we were leaving. I remember she just kept saying, like, where do you want to live? And I'm, I was just confused. And originally it was going to be Texas, and then it was Florida, and then Myrtle Beach. Just kept changing. When your mom came in this new van, did you see what was in the back of the van? No. Did you ask about where our stuff is? Because assuming all your bags and things were in the first van that Brenda, is it awkward? Acquired. Acquired. I'm struggling with that name. Mm. Uh, they were in there when you moved them. Do you know how they got from one van to another or if they even got transferred? Yes, my mom and my uncle moved them. How do you know that? I just remember that that morning it was cold outside and I was in the hotel and they had moved stuff. And so was this a pretty quick deal? I mean, did your mom literally come back, pick you up and then you hit the road? Is that what happens? I remember that they were on a time crunch because my family had to get back to their flight in Denver. And so uh, did your family go one direction? And I don't know if it's the same direction, but and you and your mom went somewhere else? Yes. May I approach the witness, Sharon? You may. Can I hand you people's exhibits 201 and 202? Do you recognize those exhibits? Yes. What is People's Exhibit 202? It is the back of the van. Is that a picture of the van that your mom rented uh, back on February 1st, 2020 and picked you up from the hotel? Yes. Um, and 204, is it 204? 202 and 203. Is that 201 right? and 202. <laughs> God, I'm not even close. So 201 is a picture of the van. What is 202? A, a picture of the back of the van. Is that what the back of the van looked like as far as you know? Yes. Was there a partition between the driver's seat and the back of the cargo area? What do you mean? Can you see like a metal grate between the cargo area and the driving area of that van? Yes. Is that what that looked like from inside? Yes. Uh, move for the missions of uh, 201 and 202. No objection. Exhibits 201 and 202 will be admitted. Request to publish. You may go ahead. So here we have people's exhibit 201. Do you see that on the TV screen behind you? <laughs> yes. Is that the van then that you uh, drove off to with your mom on February 1st, 2020? Yes. And people's exhibit 202. We see in people's exhibit 202. It is a picture of the back of the van. Do you ever go back in this back area during I, the entire time you had this van? I did not know. And why not? Because everything that I needed was right by my seat in the front of the van. Want to go back there? Um, I remember like wanting more clothes. But why didn't you go back and get some more clothes? Just because whenever we stopped, it was like quick, like um, whenever we stopped at hotels and stuff. So 
Um, to no point. Well, did you ever ask your mom, why can't I go back there and get some clothes? No. Did your dogs ever go back there? No. Did you have your dogs with you? I guess I should ask first. Yes, we did. Um, can we go to People's Exhibit 303 that's already been admitted? I'm gonna show you a picture uh, that's already in evidence. It's People's Exhibit 303 uh, in just a second. Okay, 303 is up on the TV screen now. Do you recognize this photograph? It has a placard 14 with what appears to be a kind of a rubber dog bone. Yes. Do you recognize that dog bone? Yes. And what, how do you recognize that? Um, because we had all like the dog's toys up front and their food and everything. They were playing with it on the drive. Did you leave that in the van after you turned it in? I didn't know until yesterday. How sure are you that that's the dog bone that you had with your dogs in that van? It looks familiar, like, because, like, they're puppies, so we got, like, the little bones, so, yeah. Okay. All right, great. We can take that down. So, what are you talking about as you're leaving in this budget van from the hotel room? Do you, do you ask your mom where you're going, what's the game plan, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I did. Um, that's when she was asking me, like, where do you want to live? Um, and the destination just kept, like, changing. And um, she was just talking about like starting a new life. What about Albert and Lena? And did you ever talk about leaving them? And no, um, she just kept saying that, you know, Albert went against her and doesn't believe her. So that's why she wanted to leave. And did something like that happen in the past where you and your mom left Albert and the kids on the road somewhere later? Yes. Tell the jury about that. Um, there were multiple times that she would just get like angry or frustrated and ask me to like pack up all my clothes and we'd get in the car. One time specifically from Colorado, we drove all the way through Kansas and then she would always like be like, okay, we just need to go home because her and Albert would talk it out and then we'd go home. Did you think that was going to happen on this trip? Yes. Uh, did that happen on this trip? No. At what point did you realize that was not going to happen on this trip? Once we were close to Myrtle Beach. So all the way across country up to Myrtle Beach, you're thinking we're going to go back to Colorado. Everything's going to be fine. They're going to get back together. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember when this trip to Kansas happened that you end up turning around and going back? It was during the time that we lived in Colorado. I don't know the exact month. No. Sometime during 2019 then? Yes. Do you remember stopping at a uh, Love's truck stop in Pueblo, Colorado to get gas? Yes. Uh, do you remember about what time it was? No. <laughs> Do you remember stopping at a Walmart in Trinidad on your way in the budget van? Yes. And do you know why you stopped at the Walmart in Trinidad? To get a phone. And did you guys get a phone? Yes. Who went in and got the phone? My mom. Up until this point, as she's driving, was she obeying the laws and stopping at stoplights, stopping at stop signs, that kind of thing as she's driving? Yes. Did she know where she was going? Did she ever tell you, I'm lost, I don't know what we're doing here? No. Where did you think you were going as you left Walmart in Trinidad? Texas. Why Texas? Um, I just remember her saying, like, Texas is a good place to live. Up until this point, did you notice anything unusual in the back of the van? No smell anything in the back of the room? No. You talked about Gannon and where Gannon might be driving down through Trinidad, Southern Colorado. 
No, she was on the phone a lot talking to people about everything. What was she talking about? Um, I remember one conversation was about a video that was going to be surfaced. Um, and she said it was going to prove her innocence. Um, just going over like everything that happened. Who is your mom concerned about during these phone conversations? She just calls her speculating. Sustained. I think you can ask her uh, what she said. Sure. During these phone conversations, did you hear your mother talking about? Did I what? I'm sorry. Did you hear your mother talking on the phone to someone on the other side? Yes. Did you hear what she was saying? Yes. Who was she talking about with regards to what's going on with Gannon being missing and things like that? Her sister. Was she talking about her sister or was she talking to her sister about herself? Talking to her sister about herself. And what were the kind of things she was saying? Um, she just kept saying like she was set up, that this video that's going to surface will show that Gan came home. Um, just things along that line. Now, as you're sitting in that van listening to these conversations, did you ever ask your mom, what are we doing? Why are we leaving? And it's missing. Why aren't we out looking for him? That kind of stuff? Um, no, I didn't really question her a lot. Why didn't you question your mom? I would be told that, um, like, I'm being, like, disrespectful or, like, talking back. And what would happen if you were being disrespectful or talking back to your mom? Sometimes she would, like, backhand me. Where would she backhand you at? To my face. Is that why you just didn't say anything and you sat in the van and went wherever she was driving? Yes. Overruled. Do you eventually go to Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you recall staying the night in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you remember what hotel you stayed at in Amarillo, Texas? No. Uh, did you stay at a Candlewood Suites? Sounds familiar, yes. And do you remember watching some videos of you and the dogs walking into Candlewood Suites in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. Okay. You know, we can take a break now and then get into the videos, or I can keep going, whatever you prefer. Council approach, please. All right. Mr. Young? Yes, Your Honor, thanks. You know, I believe there's a stipulation to the admission of People's Exhibit 316, 321, 317, 318, 320, and 323. And that's the order we're going to play them. That's why I went out. I was going to say, let's, uh, <laughs> let's try that again. All right. We'll go 316 through 318. 316 through 318. 320, 321, and 323. Okay. And um, defense, do you agree? I do. All right, exhibits 316 through 318, 320, 3, uh, 321, and 323 will be admitted. Thank you, Judge. And before we play those, uh, Ms. Hunt, uh, did you hear your mom making these reservations as, as you've been driving, particularly the one in Amarillo at the Kennewood Suites? Yes. You remember about how close in time to when you actually checked in that she made these reservations? It was close in time, yeah. And would she make the reservations for one person or two people, two people or two dogs? How would she make that reservation? Um, with For one person. And do we see that in the video that you'll walk through the lobby first with two dogs? She later comes in and goes to the counter and registers? Yes. Uh, with that, we would play People's Exhibit 316. All right. Before we hit play, is that you with the dogs right there that we see in the still image? Yes. Go ahead and hit play, please.
Now the clock in that video looked like it said 7.48 p.m. or 19.48 military. You remember being about that time when you checked into the hotel? Yes. We can now play People's Exhibit um, 321. Can we, yeah, we'll just let it play. Now that video stopped at 747. Is that a continuation of you walking through the lobby, going back to the elevators? Yes. That speaks for itself, but is that what happens here? Yes. And where were you going to go? Why, why'd you go to the elevators? Do you know? Um, I just know, like, she didn't want to pay for two dogs staying with us, so we just went in separate. Okay. And was that routine throughout this trip? Would you do that every night you stayed somewhere? Yes. Uh, we can play 317 now. your mom there we see at the counter yes Video stopped and it looked like the time was 7.47 p.m. Did you see that on the counter? Yes. You know where you're at as your mom's at the counter? Um, by the elevators. We can go ahead and play uh, People's Exhibit 318. Now, we haven't seen any bags in either of your hands now. Did you guys get bags out of the van or change clothes or what was the plan with that? No, it was always just like a in and out thing when we would stop at hotels. We can go to 320 now. Okay, 320 has been played. It looked like it was 750 when that stopped. Is that right? Yes. So we can go to 323 now. So she got on the same elevator you did? Yes. Do you remember where you met up in that hotel that night? No, I don't know if we knew the room beforehand or how we arranged that. Do you leave the hotel at all to go eat dinner or do anything like that? Do you know? No. How did you eat that night? Do you remember? 
Um, we would order it to the room. Room service? What'd you do? No, Grubhub. During the entire trip, did you ever stop anywhere and eat at a restaurant, a sit-down place? No. What kind of places, where would you eat during this trip? Um, places with like a drive through And would both of you go in to the drive through or would you drive the van to the drive through area? Um, I remember one time me going inside to get our food. Did you ever stay in the van by yourself? No. You know why? No. Do you remember when you checked out of that particular hotel room? The uh, next day. On February 2nd, 2020, do you remember about what time of day it was when you left? Um, around like nine or 10, check outs at like 11, so. Okay. And so uh, when you wake up the next morning, do you have any idea where you're going? No, just back on the road. Was the plan still going to Texas, moving to Texas? I think at that point it was um, we were just going somewhere in Florida. Now, the night you stayed in Amarillo, Texas, uh, did you and your mom sleep in the same bed? Um, I know there were times where we did. I don't remember at which hotel. Were there times where you had your own bed? I don't remember. I remember like one specifically when we did have the same bed. Well, the night of February 1st into February 2nd, did your mom ever leave the room by herself? No, not to my knowledge. February 2nd, um, do you remember driving all the way to Decatur, Texas on that date? Yes. And do you remember staying at uh, Candlewood Suites in Decatur, Texas? Yes. Uh, did your mom do the same thing? Would she call in advance, make a reservation? Would you go in with the dogs first? She comes in later. Yes. As she's making these reservations, do you recall her using any kind of corporate raid or saying that she was with a corporation, things like that? Yes. What would she say? Um, I believe it's called Ford Motors. Where would that come from? Do you know? Um, my aunt. So your mom knew that she can get a cheaper rate by saying Ford, or do you know that? Yes. Uh, based on where your aunt worked? Um, I believe it was her husband. Yeah. Do you remember your mom ever leaving the hotel room when you're in Decatur, Texas on February 2nd, 2020? No. If she would have left the hotel room, would you have known it? When I was awake, yes. Okay. Obviously, if you're asleep, you don't, right? Right. Okay. So February 3rd, 2020, um, do you remember checking out and leaving Decatur, Texas? Yes. Would it be about the same time you left the hotel in Amarillo? Yes. Do you remember driving all the way... Pensacola, Florida. Yes. Long drive, right? Yes. Uh, when you get close to Pensacola, do you remember your mom making the reservations at a hotel room? Yes. And you remember what hotel room that was? Not the name, no. Was it the Candlewood Suites? Probably. <laughs> Same process. She's with the Ford Motor Company, corporate discount, one person. Would you walk in first? She walks in later? Yes. You remember that happening? Yes. Um, at this point, I'd like to publish People's Exhibit 181, which is already in evidence.
Okay. okay. So People's Exhibit 181 is up on the TV screen. You see that? Yes. Do you recognize any signatures on that document? Yes. Whose signature do you recognize? Um, my mom's. You remember staying at that King of Suites in Pensacola, Florida, on the night of February 4th into the early morning hours? Yes. And you remember checking in after midnight? Yes. Or actually going to bed after midnight? Yes. How many beds did you have in that? One. And was that a queen size bed? Um, no, I think it was a king. If this document says it was a queen size bed, would that refresh your record collection? Yes. Did you guys eat at the hotel that night or do you remember? I think we ate beforehand, but I don't I don't know. Did you stop on the road somewhere and do one of these drive throughs you were talking about? Yes. Pick up some quick food. Okay. So what happens when you get into this room? Do you remember? Um, you just get in, go to sleep. Now on People's Exhibit 181, it says that the car you're driving is a Nissan Altima. You guys weren't driving a Nissan Altima. Right. You see the Ford Motor Company at the top of the page there? And all this, what some gears it zoomed in. Oh, yes. That consistent with what you've been talking about, how she would use corporate re reductions to stay in these hotel rooms? Yes. So after midnight on February 4th, 2020, did your mom ever leave that room? Not that I know of, no. Uh, were you sleeping the entire time or were you awake during times that night? And we're talking 12, 30 in the morning on. I was asleep. Earlier, you indicated you're kind of a hard sleeper. Would you know if your mom left that room or not? No. How was your mom acting as you checked into this hotel room? Um, she was acting normal. Up until this point, had you ever gone to the back of that van? Who's back? No. At any of the stops up to this point, had you gotten any change of clothes or gotten any suitcases out of the back of the van? No. At any point during this trip to Pensacola, did you smell anything in the back of that van? No. Do you know why I'm asking you if you smelled anything in the back of that van? Yes. Why? Because Gannon was back there. How do you know Gannon was back there? Because you guys told me that there was evidence that he was back there. Did you later learn that Gannon's body was found in Pensacola, Florida on yes. March 17th, yes. 2020? How did you learn that? When they arrested my mom and the FBI like came to the house and told me. So what happens when you wake up the morning hours of February 4th, 2020? What's, what's going on in the room? Tell us about when you checked out and things like that. Yeah, it was just like all the other days we just check out. Afterwards, we go grab breakfast and then we go to Orlando. Why are you going to Orlando? She was planning that that's where we could stay. Um, I remember her like calling apartment places to like see if we could live there. As, as far as you're concerned, is that where you're going to be living? Yes. Into this trip? Yes. Miss Hunt, I want to ask you a, a direct question, okay? Okay. Did you help your mother throw that suitcase over a bridge in Pensacola, Florida? No, I did not. On February 4th, 2020? No, I did not. How was your mother acting like after you left Pensacola? Um, I remember that morning when we went to go get breakfast. That was another time that I went into the restaurant. Like I went into McDonald's to get our food and she was just like, like, I just remember her like being sad. Um, just like being like down. 
Did you ask her why she sat or down? Um, yeah, she was just like, because of everything that's going on. When you get to Orlando, do you remember how long it took you to get to Orlando from Pensacola? Um, no. Is it the next day? Yeah. What happens when you get to Orlando? We were supposed to stay there. Um, that was supposed to be like our time that we were going to stay there for a while. I think she booked our hotel for like five or so days. And um, we left early. Why'd you leave early? Do you know? She kept saying like, they know I'm here. They're following us. And who is she referring to when she said they're following us or they know we're here? Um, the police. Was she acting the same way she was when you're in Colorado saying following us and things like that? Yes. <clears throat> so what happens after that conversation? Um, we end up leaving. Um, and I remember her saying like, you know, we don't have like the money to keep staying at all these hotels in different places. So we drove to Myrtle Beach. And do you remember when you got to Myrtle Beach? Um, a day or two after that. Did you turn the van in to the budget rental center in Myrtle Beach? Yes. Did you go there directly or did you go somewhere else first? Um, we went somewhere else first. And how long it took to turn the van? Um, I remember we got to Myrtle Beach. She had parked the van at a hotel near where we were going to stay at like a friend's house. Okay. Do you know why she did that? Or did you ask her why she did that? Um, no, I think she said like, she just didn't want the person that we were staying with, like for them to get like attention brought to their house. Did your mom ever mention to you the fact that the van may have had a GPS device on it? She's driving. No. Do you know that? No. You know that now? Yes. How'd you unload the van in Myrtle Beach, or did you unload the van? I did not know. Who unloaded the van in Myrtle Beach? Um, I was told something of who unloaded the van. I don't know if you want to hear that. Well, who told you that? I guess it depends on that. Um, it is my best friend's mom. Okay, we can't get into that. Okay. We can get into things your mom tells you, but okay. not others, okay? Okay. Um. Do you stay in Myrtle Beach up until the point your mom was arrested? Yes. Tell the jury about your mom's arrest. I was scheduled to go in to meet with my recruiter that morning. Um, and she brought me there. She waited in the car that we had there. Um, and that's when I walked in and like there was like police and everything talking to me and told me that she had been arrested. Did you actually see her get arrested? No, I did not. And did this happen on March 2nd of 2020? Yes. Did you give an interview with FBI agent sitting over here? Yes. Recognize him? Yes. And did you talk about some of the things that we talked about here with regards to the Dollar Tree and the events surrounding Gannon's disappearance? We did, yes. Were you completely upfront with him at that time? Yes. When you were talking to him, did you still believe that your mom didn't have anything to do with this? Yes. And that was before Gannon's body was discovered, is that right? Yes. What about when Gannon's body was discovered? Um, that was a little bit after when I found out it was discovered in Florida. It was just weird because in, like to myself, I was like, we were in Florida. Um but I kept like wanting to think it was like a coincidence and that somebody like did follow us or there was a different story. You still believed your mom even after that? Yes. At what point did you not believe your mom anymore that she didn't have anything to do with Gannon's death? Um, I like started having questions, but I still like believed her for a while and it wasn't until this past like November, it was recently. What are your thoughts about your mom pleading not guilty by reason of insanity? I didn't know what it meant at first. Um, yeah. Did you learn what that meant in November? 
Um, yes. I want to talk about your life with your mom since the day you were born, as far back as you can remember, okay? Okay. Had you been with her 24-7? Yes, other than like when I was at school or work or... Would she ever disappear for weeks at a time and you not know where she's at? No. Had you always known where she was at up until we talked about the Life 360 app, but had you always known where your mom was at for a given time? Yes. <clears throat> had you ever gone to Australia with your mom? No. Have you ever gone to Saudi Arabia with your mom? No. Has your mom ever gone to Australia or Saudi Arabia without you? No. Would you know that if she did? Yes. Had you ever seen your mom change personalities into someone she isn't? No. What do you mean by that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Has she ever not remembered who you were? No. Have you ever seen her not remember who Al Stout was? No. Have you ever seen her not remember who Gannon was? No. Lena? No. Had she ever been treated for any mental illness in your lifetime? No. Would you know that if she was treated? Yes. Would you know if she ever went to a psychiatric hospital and was in an inpatient program and couldn't leave because of some kind of mental illness? Yes. Had that ever happened? No. Had she ever seen a therapist about mental illness that you know of? No. During the entire time, especially in January, January 27th of 2020, all the way up till you go to Myrtle Beach in this van, your mother had the capacity to know right from wrong. Yes. Did you see that with your own eyes? Yes. Did she know how to check into rooms? Yes. Did she know how to register for rooms? Yes. Did she obey the traffic laws? Yes. Did she do anything unusual on any, you know, during this entire trip? No. <laughs> Have you seen people who are mentally ill? Yes. Do you know the difference in what I'm talking about? Someone who can't function in society versus the way your mom was acting? Yes. Did you see any evidence of that with your mother? No. Had you seen instances, especially in January and January 27th of 2020, where your mother had the capacity to form the intent to do things? What do you mean? She intended to go to the store. Yes. And you went to Walmart to buy clothes. Did you talk about that? And then did you in fact go to Walmart to buy clothes? Yes. Did you have an opportunity to see her to have the capacity to form judgment, to use judgment and reflection and to make decisions? What do you mean? Was she able to decide things? Oh, yes. Was she able to rent this rental van on her own, take you and drive Texas all the way to Florida up to Myrtle Beach? Yes. Has your mom ever referred to herself as Jasmine? No. Do you have a cousin named Jasmine? No. Jazz? Her name's Jazlyn. Jazlyn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I must have misunderstood something. Do you know who Jasmine is in the Disney movies? Yes. Aladdin? Yes. Your mother watched a lot of Disney movies? No. You've never seen her act like Jasmine, the prince, princess in Aladdin, saying she's going to go to Saudi Arabia and things like that? No. Have you ever heard your mother refer to herself as Taylor? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, she didn't like her first name, so she wanted to change it. And I thought she changed her middle name to Taylor, and that's why she went by Taylor. Did she open social media accounts with the name Taylor? Because of what you just said? Yes. Do you know if she ever legally changed her name to Taylor? No. Uh, 
when she was referring to herself at Taylor, did she take on a different personality or is it your same old mom? The same. What about Victoria? Has she ever referred to herself as Victoria? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Harmony? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Christina? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Little Lucia? No. Has she ever referred to herself by the name of Maria Sanchez? No. You know a Maria Sanchez? No. Have you ever seen your mother speak with a Spanish accent? No. If she had, would you remember that? Yes. During these times when you're talking to your mother and she's angry about being set up by the police and being accused, did she ever change personalities and start talking in Spanish or in a Spanish accent? No. Harley, at one point last year, um, were you concerned that you might be charged with a crime based on the trip to Florida? Yes. What crime was it that you were aware of that you might be charged with? Um, that I would be like an accessory. That's right, a first degree murder, right? Yes. And did you receive information through your attorney that we was willing to listen to your side of the story before we made a decision as to whether or not we were gonna file charges? Yes. And did you fly out to Colorado and give us a statement much like what you just said today to this jury. Yes, I did. And why did you do that? Because it's the right thing to do. When you gave that statement, was there any guarantee as to whether or not we were gonna file charges against you? No, there was not. What was the guarantee? What was told to you? There was no guarantees. Do you know that what you told us could not be used against you? Yes. Were you completely honest with us? Say us. I was the one asking you questions, right? Yes. And we videotape that? Yes. Really honest with us. Okay. Yes. Sustained. You can rephrase the question. You understood what you were coming in to talk to us about? Yes. You understood the consequences that you might be charged with a serious charge, right? Yes. You know that during the entirety of your state? Yes. Do you now know that you cannot be charged with that crime? Yes. Why? Because you guys believed me. I was being honest. Have you heard anything called the statute of limitations? Talk to you about that? No. Were you aware that there was kind of a deadline as to when we needed to make a decision about filing charges on you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we don't need to go any further than that but it, at this time you know you cannot be charged with that right correct uh, but it wasn't part of the agreement that you signed back on august 17th of 2020 do you remember correct. and do you remember signing an agreement yes if i may approach your honor you may this is people who live in green 24 and the scissors i'll open it for you I don't disturb the document here. Before you wade into that, would now be a good time for a break? About to wrap up with this, Your Honor. Okay. So going That's away. fine. No, it's all good. And for the record, I'm pulling out the contents of People's Exhibit 324. And I'm going to hand that to you. It looks like this is a two page document. Do you recognize that? Yes. And can you put those on that table? Yes. What is that? Um, this is what I signed after my interview. Is that the proffer agreement that you signed back in August of 2020 <clears throat> prior to doing your interview with our office? Yes. And is that is that the same as it was back in August when you signed? Yes. Move to admit people's exhibit 320. Exhibit 324 will be admitted. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. 
Those are my questions, John. Thank you. Thank you. May I all be seated? Court will recall 20 CR 1358, uh, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, Cross examination, Mr. Tolini. Thank you, John. Ms. Hunt, I know this is emotional and difficult. Um, I've just got some questions to ask you. Okay. If you don't understand my questions, just let me know and I'll rephrase. Also, once I'm done, Mr. Young is going to have a chance to come up here and do what's called redirect. <laughs> Something you don't think that you think you needed to ask for my question or that wasn't quite fair. I'm just going to have the chance to clear that up. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. So your mom and dad split up when you were about six? Yes. And after that point in time, up until your mom met Al, it was just you and your mom? Yes. And you guys were pretty close? Yes. And you guys spent a lot of time around each other? Yes. And do you remember sometimes during that time and all the times growing up that sometimes you would come on your mom and she would be in the closet rolled in a ball crying? No. You, we met before, right? You remember? Yes. We're down in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina? Yes. We went out to dinner? Yes. Do you remember telling me at that point in time that oftentimes you'd come and you'd see your mom lying on the floor crying? Yes, you are. This is incorrect. Just to make sure it's me. Well... Yeah, I've already instructed the jury that um, nothing that the attorneys say at any point in time is evidence. He can attempt to um, redirect her to a prior conversation. If he's going to impeach her, he's going to need a different um, approach than that. But we'll leave it at that. So re-ask your question, Mr. Tolini. We were at, we went out to dinner to talk about your mom growing up. Yes. At that point, you told me that sometimes you'd come across her in the closet crying. The question that you asked me, you were very specific, saying rolled in a ball and everything. So I answered no to that. But yes, I've came across my mom crying before. Do you remember coming across your mom crying and she was in the closet crying? Yes, she was in the closet like many a times just growing up, either texting on her phone or crying or many different reasonings. Did she have an explanation of what she was crying about? In which specific time? Any times that you would, she, you would see her crying. Did sometimes, was sometimes she crying for no apparent reason? No. Okay. When you were in Charleston? Yes. Do you recall a time where your mom was texting you um, that something's going to happen to her and that you need to go live with Amy Bolton. Yes. And who's Amy Bolton? One of my mom's friends. And that Miss Bolton and you were both very concerned for your mom? Yes. That you actually had to crack her um, code on her phone? To see yes. Where she was? And she was in the hospital? Yes. She was in the hospital for mental issues? I was told she was in a hospital for like cancer and stuff. I don't know. I've been told so many things. Okay. Well, you had phone calls that both your mom, both you and Ms. Bolton were worried your mom was going to commit suicide. And then you tracked her down into the hospital. Yes. There was also a time, um, you're about 15, you had a Jeep. Remember that Jeep? Yes. Your mom took the Jeep one time and wrecked it? Yes. Your mom told you she wrecked it because she thought she saw your dead father sitting behind beside her. No. No. I remember her wrecking the car. Um, I didn't get a clear, like, reason why it happened. I thought she swerved off the road for something, but not because of my dead dad. You don't recall her saying she thought she saw a chance. No. There were also times growing up that you lived significant stretches of time with Didi? Yes. Why? One was when we lived in Charleston because I wanted to go to my old school as well, just because things weren't normal when we lived in Charleston. What do you mean things weren't normal? Like nobody was happy. It's just... Your mom wasn't happy when she was living in Charleston? 
Nobody was happy when we lived in Charleston. Okay. You would take lots of trips with your mom? Yes. Sometimes it felt so much like you're almost living out of suitcase? Yes. Growing up, do you remember your mom being paranoid about you getting kidnapped? Not specifically me being kidnapped. She was always just worried about me. I mean, so she would give you code words? Um, yes. What were the code words? Like, we would describe, describe. What were you, what do you mean by that? Um, I think it was like my middle name. How were you supposed to use it? Um, She would say it so that I would know that it was her talking to me. Okay. I'm just going to say why this would be necessary. No, I just thought it was normal mom things, making sure your kid's safe. Okay. And you guys would also have safe places that you would meet up if necessary? No. Like the Chick-fil-A parking lot? No. You started using the name Taylor just prior to meeting Al? Yes. Do you remember complaining to her that it was confusing for you? You didn't know what to call her? Um, yes, because I didn't know if that was her. I was told it was her middle name, so. Okay. What about using the name Nicole? No. In those text messages between you and the phone that was your mother's phone, who's the name on your mother's phone? It says Nicole. This, when you and your mom turned off to, went off to Kansas City, were you given much warning? Did she say what this was about or where you guys were going? Um, I just knew that she wasn't happy with her marriage, so we were leaving. She wanted to go do one of, like, flight attendant or something. Where were you guys going? I think we were going back to South Carolina. Okay. How much notice did she give you between when, hey, get in the car? Like, how much time did you have to pack? Was, there, was it a day? How much planning on this went on? Um, yeah, I did have to pack. I don't know if it was the day of or the day before. But there had, had there been any talk before, look, before she said start packing, we're leaving. Say, hey, what do you think about this? This is what I'm thinking about doing, anything like that? Or does this appear very sudden? Yes. <clears throat> appear very sudden? No, she would just be like, um, I'm not happy. What do you think about moving here? Okay. Around the fall of 2019, do you remember your mom also becoming paranoid regarding an alleged hit and run accident? A what? A hit and run that you may have been in? Yes. And she thought people were constantly following her. I remember her saying that she was like accused of a hit or run and she talked to someone about it, like a police officer, and they said it wasn't her, it didn't end up being her. Okay, but do you remember her also thinking people were following her because of that? I don't remember. Like in a black sedan? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember her quitting her teaching job because of the mental health? When was this? In winter of 2019. Um, I remember her saying she's going to become a flight attendant and going to training instead of teaching. When you guys, I'm going to shift back and so, sorry, back when you guys would go to Alaska, you guys would go for a, for a couple weeks up to a month at a time? Yes. And your mom did not like Alaska? Yes. Do you remember a time that your mom came down and said that this was going to be the last dinner with you and her? Yes. And that it was too late, she'd already taken them? Yes. And that to you imply that she was contemplating suicide? Yes. And then the next day she acted like nothing happened? Yes. 
Was that unusual? That was the second time that she had done that. So Charleston and then then. Okay. Did she ever discuss either of those things with you? No. Like afterwards? No. Explain what was going on? No. I'll go now move up to the January 26, um, 2020. Okay. Um, that Sunday morning, you got called into Massage Envy pretty early, right? Yes, I remember it being like that morning, that day, yeah. Okay. So you don't have any personal knowledge if your mom tried to take uh, Gannon and Elena to church that day? No, I just know that I didn't go to church that day. And then you got home and your mom was telling you about the fire and everything like that? Yes. And you could smell the from that you could smell that there was burning yes that occurred down in the basement you testified early or this morning that when you came home and you were talking with your mom that your mom was scared yes what was she scared of um she was she said that she was scared of like gannon because he was acting weird okay you then went and your mom, you went down in the the basement to say goodnight to Gannon. You both went down together? Yes. And do you remember your mom asking Gannon if he was all right? I don't remember. Do you remember, well, um, that letter that was given to you, that proffer letter? You came in and then you did an interview? You remember doing the interview? Yes. You, remember you did it with Mr. Young? and Agent Cohen there? Yes. Do you remember telling them that your mom asked if Gannon was all right and Gannon nodded his head? I don't remember. Um, I just remember like saying good night and like seeing him. I don't remember what I said. Yeah, but do you remember your mom asking if he was all right and he nods his head yes? Yes, if that's what I said. Okay. <laughs> And then you left that morning for work around 8, because you had to be there by 8.30? Yes, sometime around that time. Did you see Gannon before you left? Not that I remember, no. Do you remember again back when your mom was arrested in South Carolina? Yes. And that would have been in March of 2020? Yes. So pretty closer in time to the events in question? Yes. Do you recall telling Agent Cohen that you had seen Gannon in the morning and they helped you with the dogs? No, I don't remember. Okay. You got home around 4.30? Uh, which day? On Monday, the 27th. Yes. And we saw you, you went in the house there. Yes. You actually, when you left that morning, how were you dressed? In my work clothes, we wore yeah, in my work clothes. Okay. And so you have like, it's, it's like a kind of a maroon shirt for Massage Envy? No. What does the uniform look like for Massage Envy? It's black, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And they have special pants or just a shirt? No, there was no special pants. And you actually went downstairs and changed out of your uniform into a blue sweatshirt. I don't remember. If the dollar store video shows that you were no longer in your massage envy uniform, but in a blue sweatshirt, that would seem to indicate when you came home that you went downstairs to change, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Okay. So do you remember now going downstairs to change or no? No, I don't remember. At no point did your mom try to prevent you from going downstairs? No. And when you came home that Monday, the house still smelled like smoke? I don't remember if it did that Monday. I know that it did when I came home on Sunday. Okay. And you took Elena to the dollar store with you? Yes. 
How long were you guys gone? Um, this question was asked earlier. I don't remember what time we exactly said. Okay. Yeah. How far away was the dollar store? Um, down the street. Okay. And we were you in there for a super long time or pretty? It was just we went there and came home. Okay. <clears throat> And then when you came home, would, well, let me ask you this. Did you get home from the dollar store uh, before six? Mm, no, I don't remember what time I got home. Okay. Was, when you got home, was your mom already concerned because Gannon wasn't home yet? I just remember like time being approached and he wasn't there. Okay. And then uh, I kind of understood that initially you guys all go out to look for Gannon and then your mom comes home and stays home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So initially your mom, you and Lane are all going to kind of some different friend's house to see if he's there. Yes. How long does that take? Um, they lived in the neighborhood, so we were just driving around the neighborhood. So it, I don't know the exact time, but it didn't take forever. Had you, do you know, had your mom called the police before you guys went and started looking for Gannon? No, I don't think she did. Okay, so she, after you guys go, look, can't find Gannon, that's when she then calls the police. I remember her calling Albert, um, so it was like after then, so. Okay, and it takes a long time for the police to come. <laughs> yes. And you're not, mom's not appearing, is she appearing unusual during this time? Um, no, I mean, she seemed worried like anyone would. Okay. And so you've known your mom your entire life? Yes. You guys have grown up very close? Yes. And at this point in time, while you're observing her, she seems legitimately worried for Gannon? Yes. How long did you guys stay up after the police came? Do you remember or after the sheriff's came? Um, no, I don't remember. Okay. And then that next Tuesday is when everybody out comes back home, right? Yes. Um, and other people start arriving. You have people from the military come over. Um, people are expressing concern. People are bringing food. Yes. Um, people are trying to set up searches for Gannon. Yes. It's a lot of traffic in and out of the house. Yes. Then at some point later that evening, um, some members of the sheriff's department come over. Yes. And they're there, one, they're there to get Lena. They're going to take her down to the police station. Yes. Um, and they also try to talk to you. Yes. And you tell them that you will not talk about Gannon. Yes. And you said you won't talk about Gannon because of all the stories on Facebook. Yes. And because they already have all the information they need. Yes. When you say you wouldn't talk to them because of all the stories on Facebook, what are you meaning? Um, there were just people and their speculation and... It was to my knowledge that my parents had already given them everything that they needed. So I didn't, I didn't know why I played a role in it. Okay. And you actually refused to talk to both. We refused to actually talk to about three different sheriff's deputies. Refused to talk to Deputy Art or uh, Detective Art. You refused to talk to uh, Detective Perry and you refused to talk to Detective Williams. Is that correct? I don't know their names. Okay, but you remember refusing to talk to three separate, different ones? I remember refusing to talking to some. Okay. You said that going on to the next day, um, when you picked your mom up from the hospital, that she was talking weird. What did you mean by that? What do you mean? You said that you picked her up from the hospital and she was just 
Stuff was just coming out of her mouth. What did you mean? Just saying stuff from what happened at the hospital, just saying, like, events that took place. It, 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 and maybe I misunderstood. I gathered that you found the way that she was talking when you picked her up from the hospital odd. Is that incorrect? Odd as in, like, it was just, like, a bunch of, like, ramble at once. Like, it was just going on and on. Like vomiting up words? Yes. Okay. You know what tangential thoughts are? What did you say, tangent thoughts? Tangential, where people is jump, where a person jumps between subject matter to subject matter to subject matter with not necessarily a logical connection. Was that how she was speaking? Um, no, because it just all related to Gannon being missing and people accusing her, and so they all correlated in some way. Okay. But you found the manner in which she was presenting you that information was different than normal. Yes. Okay. When you leave then in that van, when did she first say that you got were going to Florida? Um, different places were, you know, said, um, I don't think we decided on Florida until after we got to Texas. Okay. And you guys are going to Texas because she was considering, she thought that might be a good place to live. Is yes. That what she told you? Did she say where in Texas may be a good place to live? Um, I think it was Dallas or Houston. Okay. And you drove that first day all the way from Colorado Springs to Amarillo? Yes. That's about 10 and a half hours? Yes. Okay. You got into Amarillo. And then the next day you went and you went from Amarillo to Decatur, Texas, correct? Yes. That's only a four and a half hour long drive, isn't it? I don't know. You know what you did the rest of that day? Um, no. You talked about your mom making reservations at these different hotels? Yes. She was actually making those reservations with an app, wasn't she? I remember some of her reservations were through a call. I remember them calling because she needed to get her IHG number. She didn't have an app on her phone for that? I don't remember if the phone that she had was a smartphone. Okay. And then you got up. And then when was it decided? So was it decided in Amarillo or in Decatur that Texas wasn't for you two? I don't know because I don't know where they're like in proximity to Houston and like Texas. Like Houston and like Dallas. Well, Decatur would be just outside of Dallas. Okay. I mean, was it between Amarillo and Decatur that you guys were talking in the car and said, you know, not Texas? Or was it that morning when you woke up in Decatur or said, let's head off to Florida? When was the decision made to go from Texas to Pensacola? I don't know which state it was in, but like, or which city it was in. I just remember I was being in Texas and deciding that. Can you remember, was it before the first hotel or the second hotel? I don't know. Okay. And then when you were driving from Decatur to Pensacola, did you guys drive around along the coast? I know that Destin is on the coast, so. Okay. And you drove through Louisiana? If that's on the route to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember driving through long stretches of the country that were marshy and swampy with nothing else around? I remember driving through like the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. The middle of nowhere, lots of marshes, lots of just nothing around. Yes. Remember that? Nothing okay. around, trees. <laughs> And 
And so you get to Pensacola and you check in the hotel. Um, and that night you guys actually slept in the same bed. Yes. Okay. And while you're sleeping in the same bed with your mother, you don't recall her ever leaving. No. And you're saying at no point in time, and so you guys are, let me back this up. You guys are in the van for that first day when you leave, when you go from Colorado Springs to Amarillo. How long were you in the van for? That day. <clears throat> okay, so all day though. Yeah. Traveling 10, 11 hours. I don't remember how long it was. I just remember being in there for a long time. Okay, and you're telling this jury at no point did you smell anything suspicious? No, I did not. That next day from Amarillo to Decatur, still you don't smell anything suspicious? No. And from Decatur, and that was a 10, 11 hour drive from Decatur to Pensacola, correct? I don't remember how long it was. But you're in the van pretty much all time? Yeah. Just you and your mom? Yes. The dogs? Yes. And you don't smell anything suspicious? No. And you can, I mean, there's that gate there, but you can still look back in that gate and see stuff back behind you. Yeah, I mean, it's there's no lights or anything, so. I know, but sometimes you're driving during the day. Right, but you can't really see through it. It's just, there's no lights back there. Okay. It's not really shining through. And the, But you never look back, and you, you're saying you couldn't see anything when you look back in that van? I didn't really have a reason to look back there. You didn't look back the whole time, all three days? You never looked back in that van? No. No? Okay. And you went from Pensacola to Orlando? Yes. And you were supposed to be in Orlando for five days, but you only stayed two? Yes, I remember we were supposed to be there for a while, and we didn't stay that long. Okay. And then decided that you needed to get, wanted to go back to South Carolina. Yes. That to be around family? Yes, I remember my mom saying that we don't have money to keep staying in hotels. Um, you know, our family was telling us just to go to Myrtle Beach, so that's where we went. And throughout this whole trip, this whole journey, I mean, it's part of the reason why you think you and your mom are going there is because you guys have been receiving some threats on Facebook and yes. social media. Yes. And so there appear to be some safety concerns why it might be best for you and your mom to leave at that point in time. Yes. And at this point in time, because knowing your mom your whole life, growing up with her, you couldn't believe that she would do anything to her again during this whole trip. No. Then you're, how long were you then in South Carolina before the FBI came to arrest your mom? Um, it was sometime between like February and March, like those weeks. And you're saying the FBI told you that Gannon had been found down in Florida when they arrested your mom? Um, no, that was when, I don't think they found his body until after she was arrested. Okay. And how'd you find that out? Um, that's when the FBI came to my house multiple times. Okay. And at some point, E.D. and Amy Bolton hire you an attorney? Yes. Uh, that's Julian Rosiel? Yes. And so obviously from that point forward until you come in with Mr. Rosiel to talk to Mr. Young and Agent Cohen, you had not spoke to law enforcement? Not after, and like, they came when they found Gannon's body and talked to me at Ms. D.D.'s house. Okay. Well, I mean, you hadn't talked about the events September 26th, 27th, and 28th. You hadn't talked to law enforcement about, or to anybody about that ever, until you sat down with Mr. Young and Agent Cohen. When I came out here? Yep. No. 
I met with you guys before I met with them. Yeah, but we didn't discuss those events. We discussed your mom growing up. Okay, yes. Okay. So you hadn't talked with anybody about those? Because do you remember that your attorney had put some conditions on us talking to you? Oh, yes. Okay. And there were things that your attorney was allowing us to ask you and other things that he was not allowing us to ask you. Yes. Okay. And so the first time you had really discussed your actions, your mom's actions over the 26th, 27th, and 28th was with Mr. Young and Agent Cohen almost three years later. Um, yes, I remember with my attorney, though, previously I had to write like a personal statement that he wrote for me to send to them. So your, your attorney wrote up what to say to them? Um, no, like a personal statement. Okay. And you would talk to your attorney before c coming out here. Yes. And basically what was explained to you is they're not sure if they're going to charge you or not. Yes. And they want to get your version of what you say happened. Yes. And then based upon that, they were going to make a determination whether or not they were going to charge you with accessory to, accessory to first degree murder. Yes. And at that point in time, you had already seen the probable cause affidavit. Yes. And so, and this, you followed this case in the media. Yeah, at some point in time, I had to stop looking at what the media said. And you remember at the beginning of that interview that you did with Mr. Young, him telling you, something to the effect of, I want to take some pressure off you. This is an all on you. Your mother's pled not guilty by reason of insanity. So that's pretty much like an admission that she did it. I don't remember what they exactly said when I went in there. Um, I know that I had questions what it meant, but I had previously talked to, to Julian what it meant as well. Okay. And when you found that out that your mom had pled not guilty by reason of insanity, that angered you? Yes. Because you felt like you've been deceived by her this entire time? Yes. And you've had to put up with a lot of scorn? A lot of what? A lot of scorn on social media? Yes. Anger and backlash? Yep. And so the decision on whether or not to charge you is going to be based upon what you, or at least not all of it, but to a degree on what you told Mr. Young and Agent Cohen. Can you rephrase what you said? You knew when you were going in to do that interview with them, that whether or not you got charged was going to be based in part upon what you told them. Yes. You will, at times, manipulate the truth for your benefit. No. And, well, so when you were living in South Korea, so between when your mom got arrested and now, you've been living with some different people. Yes, I lived with one different person. Yeah, you live with Didi? Yes. Okay. You were also getting financial support from Aunt Brenda? Yes. And Brenda had bought you a car? Yes. And then she took that car away from you guys because you guys had a diff disagreement? Yes. Um, and it was difficult for you to get back and forth to nursing school? Yes. And so in January of 2023, you set up a GoFundMe page? Yes. And on that GoFundMe page, you say, hi, my name is Harley. For those of you who don't know my story, I lost both my parents a few years ago when I was 17 years old. That statement seems to imply that both your parents died when you were 17. I don't think it does, no. Okay. Well, your dad had died a long time before that. Yes. Okay. And you didn't lose your mom. Your mom was just in prison in jail in Colorado. I lost her. Okay. But you don't think that that's at all misleading to get people to give you money? Nope, it was for my friends and family so they could have um, 
like a source to send it to me. We were likely to get more money from people if they thought your mom was dead as opposed to if your mom was dead. No. You also put in there that you've been having to provide for yourself a place to stay, transportation, and the, the ecology and the necessities of everyday livelihood. Yes. But you said that your aunt up until just before that had provided you a car. She would, at the beginning of all this, cared and would help me with things. And then she would manipulate me and take everything away from me if I didn't do what she told me to do. Okay. But you indicate on your GoFundMe that nobody's helped you and that you're just out there all alone. No, I did not. During this time, not only was I struggling coping with this, but was also struggling with navigating my way through life and getting myself back on my feet. I had to provide my place, self a place to stay, transportation, college, and everyday necessities. I never asked for help during this time and always tried to figure out everything on my own. It was a struggle filled with both highs and lows, but God has always provided a way. Yes. Okay. And you don't think that's what it actually was? I don't think that's what? You don't think that was a manipulation of the truth? No, it was not. How much money did you raise from that? Um, like eight hundred dollars or something. No further questions. Redirect. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> and Mr. Young, would you move the microphone a little bit closer to the middle? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hunt, I want to start with how, where Mr. Cellini ended on this GoFundMe page. Okay. Tell the jury why you did this GoFundMe page. Um, when this all happened to me, I was left with literally nothing. <laughs> you would think that if my mom knew that she would do this, she would do something to, like, you know, prepare her daughter or set her daughter up to not have parents or financial help. Um, I had people in the beginning, they were very nice and they volunteered. I never asked people for anything like I had said in my GoFundMe paragraph. And it's like I was like thrown <laughs> out into the world with nothing. There's some Kleenexes to your left there, Miss Hunt, if you'd like to use those. Are you doing okay? You? Yeah, I'm fine. Let me ask you this. Um, you indicated on cross-examination that it was August of, was it August of 2022 that your aunt Brenda cut you off? Um, I think it was September, August, yeah, somewhere around then. So was it after you came to Colorado to give this statement or a proffer and told us what you told this jury today? Yeah, it was after. Did she find out about it? Is that why she cut you off? Pension Foundation. I can rephrase. You can rephrase, right? Do you know why she cut you off? Um, there was just multiple like reasonings that didn't really make sense. She just didn't agree with, you know, um, like with the insurance of the car and things like that. Needless to say, it was after you gave your statement is when she took your car back and stopped providing you with funds. Yes. And you're in college, you're in nursing school, right? Yes. Were you working at the time? Yes. Now, when you made the post about losing both parents, what did you mean? I lost both my parents. It was like one day you wake up and your whole life changed. I lost my stepdad and I lost my mom. And my brother, I lost everybody. Were you trying to imply that your mom had died? No. 
Were you just stating the fact that she was arrested and you hadn't seen her since she's been arrested? Yes. I also asked you several questions about not smelling anything in the van. Do you recall that? Yes. Did your mom do anything to prevent you from smelling anything in the van as you were driving? Yes, um, she always kept the air on. I remember a time when I was cold and I tried to turn it off and she was like, no, it's hot in here. And um, I also like kept giving the dog like little like CBD treats to keep them calm. And you're driving in Jan into January, early February through Texas. Was it cold in Texas? Um, I don't remember. It wasn't like hot and sunny though. Uh, Mr. Tolini asked you on cross-examination that you would have never dreamed that your mom would have done something bad to Gannon. Do you remember that question? Yes. What do you think about that now as you sit in this courtroom? Um. I'm still in shock. I defended her for years, and I just feel like manipulated and lied to. <laughs> and when we started out your testimony this morning, you talked about learning about how your father actually died. Do you remember that? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? The manipulation that's been going on for years is finally coming to your realization? Yes. And you remember when you were talking to us back in August, uh, the questions I was asking you about why we were considering filing charges on you? Um, yes. Do you remember you, me asking you, what would you explain to a jury about driving cross country with a body in a suitcase in the back of that van? What would you tell the jury? Do you remember that question? Yes. Tell this jury, whether or not you knew that Gannon's body was back in the van and why? I, the thought just never came across my mind. I just never thought my mom would do that. Um, I didn't see her to be the person to do that. So I never even like questioned it. Like it just never came up. And what would happen if you did question it? I too would just say like, don't question me. Like, um, like saying it was back talking or Mr. Tomini was asking you questions about any relationships between the time your father and her separated and divorced by the time that she married Albert Stout. Do you remember that question? Um, yes. Did your mom date anybody or go out with anyone in between that time period? Yes. Do you remember who she went out with and for how long? Um, there was Travis. Do you know Travis's last name? No. Do you know where you were living when she dated Travis? Myrtle Beach. And how long did they date? Um, it felt like a while, a year or two. Mr. Tony asked you about a hospitalization at some point. Do you recall that question? Yes. You initially said that you thought that your mom was in the hospital because she had cancer. You remember yes. The answer? Yes. Who told you that your mom had cancer? Um, I remember her saying she had ovarian cancer when we lived in Charleston. Who said that? My mom. And was that, was she telling you that because why? Why would, why would she tell you that? I don't know. Were you asking what the heck you're doing in the hospital? Yeah. And her answer was, I have ovarian cancer. Yeah, I remember. You ever bring up ovarian cancer again with you? No. Mr. Tomini asked you questions about uh, suicides and your mom talking about suicide. Do you recall those questions? Yes. Uh, he asked you on two different events, right? Yes. Do you remember one of those events being in Alaska? Yes. Tell the jury about that. How did that come out? What was said? What was the circumstances surround what was said? Yeah, so I remember I was in my room um, and she was like, come eat, that's your last dinner with me. And I was like, what do you mean? And then um, she was like, it's already too late. Like I took them. 
And then I was just like, what? And I remember crying and I was like, what do you mean? And then um, we went and had dinner and then it was never talked about again. And was this at a time when she was telling you that she didn't want to be in Alaska? She had nothing to do with Alaska, wanted to move from Alaska? Yes. What do you think about what she said to you now? What do you mean? Was that a form of manipulation, as you indicated earlier? Yes. Had you ever seen her try to hurt herself? No. And the other time she talked about suicide, was this related to the hospitalization that she said she was in for ovarian cancer? Um, yes. Did you consider that to be a form of manipulation? Yes. Mr. Tallini asked you questions about the cell phone and the, the cell phone uh, text messages that are entered in People's Exhibit 205. Do you remember reading those? And it says for her phone, it says maybe Nicole. Yes. For yours, it says daughter. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you know why that says maybe Nicole? No, I do not. Do you know whether or not your mom actually programmed her name into the phone? No, I do not. Okay. Are you familiar with iPhones and what comes up if you don't? program it with your name in there and things? Do you mean like when you have to set the iPhone up? Yeah. Oh, yes. So what happens if you never set the iPhone up with your name in there? You can't use it. Well, would your name come up? Yes. Or would it be something maybe? Would it be maybe somebody? Objection time. Sustained. Okay. I'm not sure that this is the right witness for that. Do you know why that her phone said maybe Nicole in text messages? No. Sustained. You talked about um, your mom quitting jobs on several occasions, especially the teaching jobs. Do you remember that testimony on Cross? Yes. Um, did she ever tell you why she was quitting these teaching jobs? Yes. What did she tell you? Um, I was told that she wanted to work, and then when she would work, Albert would be mad at her that she wasn't watching the kids, and then when she would watch the kids and not be working. He would be mad at her for not working. Did she ever mention to you that she was being sexually harassed at school and she didn't want to work there anymore, things like that? Um, I heard that when I was younger. Who did you hear that from? Um, I don't know. I was in like middle or elementary school. Did you hear it from your mom? I don't remember. Is that a common theme with your mom when she doesn't want to be somewhere? Something happens that is causing her to quit her job and move somewhere else? Um, happened in Alaska. Mr. Tamini asked you about January 26, 2020 in the morning and whether or not anyone went to church. Do you remember that question? Yes. Uh, did you not, in fact, go to work in the afternoon around 2 o'clock in the afternoon that day? Sorry, I'm like forgetting times. There's been so many times. Um, yes. Let me ask you this. Uh, would your mom drive a vehicle to church? Yes. And would it be either Albert's truck or her Tiguan that she drove to church? Um, yes. Would that be on one of the ring videos in the neighborhood? If they actually went to church that day, you'd see the vehicles leaving and going to church? Yes. Do you remember changing your clothes on January 27th, 2020, when you got off of work and then went to the Dollar Tree with Lena? No, I don't remember. If you went down to the basement and you went, would you go into Gannon's room for any reason? No. Go into the storage room for any reason? No. Went to the basement, would you just go to your room, change, and then go back up? Correct, yes. Did you ever go into Gannon's room on January 27, 2020? No. Did you ever go into the storage room on that day? No. Mr. Tallini was asking you questions about the Taco Bell and after the hospital. Remember, he was asking about the, the, the voice that your mother was telling you these things about rambling and words to that effect. You remember that? Yes. 
Did she was she telling you why she left the hospital? Yeah, she was. I remember something being mentioned about the hospital workers and like the story of what happened. Was she explaining that she was being treated unfairly and she actually ran away from the hospital? She, yeah, I remember her saying she was treated unfairly. Is that why you had to go pick her up at a Taco Bell instead of the hospital? Yes. Did she tell you that? Which part? Why why you had to pick her up at the Taco Bell? Um, I don't remember. Your mom is quite the talker. When she starts talking, she jumps nonstop, right? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Is, was that unusual to you? Have you seen her on numerous occasions basically talking nonstop? Yes. <clears throat> Did you ever, whether it's January 27th or January 28th or January 29th, clean up any blood at 6627 Mandon Drive? No, I did not. If you had, would you have been telling this jury that? Yes. Did you ever see any blood on Gannon's wall in his bedroom? No, I did not. Did you see any blood in the storage room on the floor? No, I did not. Did you see any blood in the basement area at all? No, I did not. Could you smell any cleaning down in the basement? Um, our house always smelled clean. Why is that? Um, my mom was like a neat freak, so she always wanted everything clean. If you would have known Gannon's body was in the back of that van and you were talking to Agent Cohen back here, would you have told him that? Yes. You would have known that he was in that van when the FBI came out to South Carolina to talk to you about Gannon's body being found on March 17, 2020. Would you have told him that? Yes. Do you know now that Gannon's body was in that van as you drove across the country? Yes. Was your mom pretty athletic? Yes. Was she capable of lifting heavy objects? Yes. Overruled. Do you know how much Gannon weighed? He was little. Um... So he didn't, he didn't weigh a lot. Was your mom capable of carrying his body in a suitcase, picking it up and throwing over a bridge rail in Pensacola, Florida? Yes. Is that easy for you to say? No. You still love your mother? I'll strike that, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Do any of the jurors have any questions for me, son? Looks like we have a couple. Mr. Young, if you would retrieve those in counsel approach, please. Um, Ms. Hunt, did you see a large green suitcase loaded into the second van? No. The night when your mom asked, sorry, Jess. The, the night when your mom asked you to go down with her to say good night to Gannon, do you have a specific recollection of seeing any part of his body, like his hands, face, or any part of his actual skin? I remember seeing his head. <clears throat> the morning of the first day in Pensacola, Florida, when you left the hotel, do you recall if the van was in a different parking spot than where you had parked it when you checked in? Um, I don't remember. So let, let me rephrase that a little bit. So when you got there, the van's parked and you check in, you come out the next morning, is it in the same spot or in a different spot? I don't remember where we parked. I just know we like would always park towards the back of the hotel. Okay. During your time living in Colorado Springs home with the other kids, uh, Gannon and Lena, did it appear to you that Gannon was treated more strict 
or more unfair than anyone else by the defendant, your mom? No. All right. I will allow reasonable follow-up as to those questions only. Prosecution. Are we request to publish People's Exhibit 48 that's already in the evidence? Ms. Hunt, if you can look at the TV screen, uh, this is People's Exhibit 48. Do you recognize the suitcase that we see in that exhibit? Yes. How do you recognize that suitcase? I remember it from like moving from like Alaska or anytime we would move. Had you ever seen that during the time periods that we've been talking about? January 27th, January 28th, January 29th, all the way up to February 4th? No. Those are my questions. Defense. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. You may step down. Watch your step. It's okay. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to end a little bit early today. Um, so if I can have everyone back in the jury room a little bit before nine o'clock in the morning, we should be able to start on time. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, do not do your own independent research about any aspect of the case. And we will see you all at nine o'clock in the morning. All rise for the jury, please.